Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Look, look, Chris isn't even watching. He doesn't even care, folks. I'm here. Hello, Go. Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back. Like I was trying to say before, he was rudely ignoring us. Welcome back to another episode of the Classic Quest. It's your boy, HSR. Whoop, whoop. It's your boy, Chris Chrome. It is your lady friend, Bonnie. And yeah, sorry about missing last week. Uh, sometimes life gets busy. Um, we're, we're, you know, it's, it's summertime, you know? We it has been to... so hard to like do this week over week without <laughs> missing as much. Like, I'm pretty proud of We've our We've been level. pretty good. We've been pretty good, for real. But um, before we uh, jump into it, we're going to do some housekeeping. You can ch- skip ahead, check the description if you are not as interested in that. So just to let you all know who are new here, we are basically going to take this out and talk about it track by track. Uh, this one has been recommended by a few people over the course of our time here. And uh, yeah, it was just... We're not necessarily the biggest hip hop head scholar types. We don't live the life. We're, we're not from the hood or anything. We're just <laughs> folk who are trying to understand and grow and, and like. We're from whatever. little old Montreal up in Canada. And I say this <laughs> as like a preemptive <laughs> explanation because of some comments we've gotten in the past, like yep. namely, why are you doing this? So just to like <laughs> explain it a bit, we care Here's about why. like learning and understanding. And we're that's just the we're goal. just trying to like listen to all of like the cool hip hop and like. Not, just enjoy it or not, you know? Well, not coming off like the whitest of the white. <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to learn. <laughs> um, so we do uh, care a lot, and we want to just, uh, we want to give a big shout out to our patrons, Lindell, Williams, Mozart, Mozart, and Super Old School 1994. Whoop, 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 At the whoop, end whoop. of the video, we'll talk a little <laughs> bit about that. And um, we do also want to, we read all the comments and everything, and I wanted to just share our favorite comment from the last video, which was on ludicrous word of mouth. This is from Preston C., uh, not a huge Ludacris fan, but I do like a lot of his older, more comical albums. I get where you're coming from, sir. And uh, originally from growing up in South Georgia, uh, Cali now, I like the whole Southern style he has. Also, the style that he uses with his punchlines is very comical. And it's like listening to a stand-up comedy. I think I'll pretty much... Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. said the same thing. It was, yeah. it was so enjoyable. His song, Georgia, with Field Mob and Jimmy Lock. Uh, Jamie Foxx is still on the, his playlist, and that's cool. That Ludacris has Ooh, that kind of check that lasting out. effect. Like I feel like a lot of people really like Ludacris, and then he just kind of disappeared to make movies, and then he would come back and do music. But I feel like that. that also movies him, were amazing too. But I feel like that also helped him keep relevant, though. Like that's why people but, love him to this day. But I would say, and he's hosted a few. Things, I would say I it was well. kind of relevant in like the two thousands. But like post two thousand ten, I would not say he's been quite as relevant. I would say he's just kind of been not. Has, so it, has he there. hosted the um, the like the Grammys or like the M? I don't I know don't, the Much Music Awards or the know. MTV Awards or something. I feel like I have no idea. Or am I just thinking of like LL Cool J? He's relevant, <laughs> sort of. Anyway, we're not here to talk about them. Um, yeah, yeah, we just wanted to show you the comments. So if you leave a comment, you, you know, you can correct us. You can add your experiences. There's a chance we may even read it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so why don't we jump into this week's album, Mr. Christopher? Why don't you introduce it? Well, for this week's Classic Quest album, we went with A Piece of Strange by the Cunning Linguists. <laughs> That's the funniest. That's the best fucking rap name we've ever cried. That is my favorite. That is one of my favorite puns because yeah. it's like, it's like Cunnilingus, but you're a cunning linguist. And Cunnilingus is eating pussy. And Cunning Linguist is wordplay with your mouth. Yep. And it's so great because it requires good tongue work to accomplish both those things. <laughs> As a result... I love this fucking name. <laughs> I'm going to start the review off with just saying that. Um, okay. Bonnie's Loud and like, clear. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> so do you know these guys before this? No. No. This is the first time I've ever heard of this group, ever heard of that word. Um, You've never heard Cunnilingus? Yeah. No, never. Well, that was not expected. Go on. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I've never heard of them. This is the first album that I'm going to dive into and figure out who these guys are. Um, I mean, as you would with cunning, diving into any sort of. Right. <laughs> um, but um, in terms of like cunning linguists, I, I figured they're like, you know, very lyrical. They got like, they're going to be talking about some real deep messages and have mm-hmm. some shit to say. It's not your average, like, shoot them up, do this type, you know, like. In fact, you expect them to be cunning. Which is like yes. smart and linguists, which and is language based. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be one of those reviews. <laughs> um, yeah. So cr- this is the part. Yeah, just to explain where we want to just share how connected we are to them. Chris is not connected to them, is what we've established. 
Um, Bonnie, have you heard of them before this? I, too, am not connected with them. Well. I have never heard of them before. Um, yeah. It was it was interesting. I've never heard of them really outside of the comment section. I mean, I've known they exist because I love the name mm-hmm. of the group, and I'm like, it, it, I've read about it, but I never really listened to them. I assume they'd be fun. I didn't know that they would be so smart. I, I kind <laughs> of assume they'd be a little more jokey or, or yeah. sexual. Like the, the yeah, the just name, based off right? of yeah, the name. Yeah, yeah a little bit. because I judged a book by a cover. But uh, they're an American hip-hop trio from Lexington, Kentucky, and Atlanta, Georgia, according to uh, the Wikipedia I have open here. And uh, I just wanted to say the group consists of Deacon the Villain, who raps a lot. Mm-hmm. No who produces and also sometimes spits. And if I'm not mistaken, Natty had just joined the group at this album, but was not an original member as there was somebody before them. And uh, that was as much as I would think we can go into right now about them, just to say that, you know, that's who is the group. For those who are new here, there's a couple of them. But I like that they got, like, the DJ inside the group, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Very old it's, school. It's, yeah, it, it makes me think of, like, Eric B. and Rakim yeah. or Rakim. Um, and, like, even, um, like, the Beastie Boys and, like, or you know. Public Enemy. Yeah. Well, I was, I was just, I've been reading some stuff or, or just seeing some kind of challenges online where it's, like, go make music with, like, the same person for a year and watch and see how if you don't actually start to, like, define your style and come up with your own original shit. And I don't know. I, I guess uh, it's just something interesting. Like, do do how often these days do we find rappers are really sticking with, like, one producer for a whole project? And when we see that, take an example of uh, Jay-Z's 444. Mm. It ends up kind of being, like, more substantial, more defined, more clear to the point. So but even if you look at, like, Brockhampton, you know, they have their own in-house guys that make all the same shits and whatnot, all these groups, and they seem to be, like, popping off a little stronger than the guys but who I, are... But I feel like, but, like, already, like, Jay-Z is one side of the spectrum, Brockhampton's another side of the spectrum. I think just in my own opinion i feel like it's more uh what is it clout chasing what's trending what's fashionable like if i don't know metro Boomin makes one track and then i don't know one of the other ones like smoke prep or something i think he makes beats as well if he makes another instrumental but at the at the moment when you hear both of them if that like heavy bass type of trap is in the fashion is like in the trending you know they're gonna go for the one that's more popular at that moment even though you know metro Boomin made a good a good beat it's still like I don't think, in, in terms of how I, I see kind of music popping off nowadays, I feel like if the beat is relevant to what everyone else is listening to, we're going to go with that. Who like doesn't matter I mean, who produced it or not. I would highly say that that almost proves the point I'm pointing, like trying to say, <laughs> is that that is what a lot of pop guys do, and that's why their music doesn't have a defined style. Oh. That's what I was saying. So, yes, you described what like is happening, whereas... If you look at more of those groups that seem to be more defined with like a set thing, what I can say is they seem to be more, it's more like they have more an identity that's stronger. And I just wonder, like, I mean, I make music, I work with the same guy for pretty much a whole project, just, just him. And it was such a different experience than shopping for beats and looking around. And you end up really just collaborating and evolving with that person. Right. And, and like, it just is, it, I guess it's just, just for me, it was such a re- recent experience. And I just, uh, I wonder if there's value, what you guys think out there on that subject. Cause Honestly, this album had that. If you look at like um, the con- uh, sorry, the common album that we did, B? yeah, it was basically just fucking Kanye West. Right. Look how fucking right. strong that shit turned out to be. Or look at the well, recent Kanye guess, albums that I mean, were all in, in terms of because I, I do agree. Like Cause once that's, you that's have a- that that connection, you can flow with it. Like you can just go with it. So like. I see it. I see and I'm, it. Not, I'm not trying to devalue an artist with a good ear who can shop for beats. Like, take a Lupe, who seems to be able or even, like, take a Big Sean's I Decided album, which was really varied, really cool. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it's not always a good thing. I just wonder if there's value in more people taking the time to stick with somebody and make that happen to define a style and what you guys think about. Anyway, so this album mm-hmm. is called The Piece of Strange, which immediately made me think of uh, some pussy because you know strange and you're not and then you got the album oh, cover see, i would never have thought of that i just thought it was like you know they're gonna give you some of their strange ideas and their thoughts and you know here's a piece of it that was the one of the other thoughts i had and then i also thought of strange fruits at the same time the the stuff like the by um, fruit? no are you talking about this the strange fruits that um 
not uh, what's her face Etta. yeah yeah that thing oh. or just the idea all the three of those things kind of flashed in my mind at once well, with I this mean, when you it, like it, if you want to talk about that look at the album cover you have like I kind of looked at me like Adam and Eve type where like yeah. Eve's in the forest with the apple and, and she's temptation. holding it. It's, it's, no it's definitely Eve because well, like, yeah, it's definitely yeah. like the whole thing is there, yeah. you know, well, and she's I think like it's, naked but covered. But it's it's supposed to like be conveying my temptation. Oh, I didn't realize the skulls in the background. Yeah, and I thought like the skulls would maybe were maybe like the men that and she had devoured them. because she's so like tempting and kind of seductive. Uh, I thought like maybe she was like kind of like the evil devil in herself a little bit. Um, and it and it looked like somebody drew like this um, this picture, but like you know, so it's like you know maybe like someone's art or you know maybe one of maybe one of the the you know the guys that are rapping. Uh, I don't know who who did it, but yeah, definitely is one of the nicer album covers I would say because it really it's does very pretty. And it takes that name, and then you realize it's it's about you know temptation or you know stepping away from the righteous or the pure, and so you get the sense that. Actually, I didn't even really know what to expect. I, I expected the album was going to be a little bit non-conventional and maybe um, talking like, a little bit about temptation. And you guess you get the idea of religion a bit from it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really get the religious stuff at first. I can see it. I mean, it's not my, it's not lost on me. But well, there's like the snake, and there's her holding the apple, and she's in a garden, and she's naked, and yeah. I mean, it all kind of adds up. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the woman is going to take you away from God's path. Uh, anyway. That's what I got from the cover. I don't know if anyone else has more to comment here. Um, I think the only other thing that I wanted to say, because it looks like so, um, I guess I want to say amateur a little bit, like the cover, like it's not like it doesn't look like professional or something, you know, it just looks really? like, I don't know. Like it just looks like, you looks know, like, like a, a friend, it looks like, like a, a friend a drew it. Completely professionally illustrated comic book strip to me. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Because, like, there's a lot of detail, a lot of shadowing, a lot I of mean, texture the, like, work. I mean, like, the drawing is beautiful. I'm not, like, debating that, but I just f feel like that was just, I mean, like, I don't know. It feels comic -y. No, you Maybe. I just, I just feel like just from the cover, it made me think it was a little bit amateur, so I was kind of expecting kind of like a, an underground amateur kind of, like, raw feeling. I, I guess. think I just I think of it as raw. Let's just say that, not amateur. Rah, I can appreciate, but yeah. I think it's extremely well done. Like that yeah, is I agree. I think she's, you know, the, the girl's very pretty. I think the, the it's well illustrated. I know what everything is. So I guess the real question is then, where will you be? All right. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, I just got to say, gorgeous introduction. Gorgeous Absolutely. start to this. Mm -hmm. How did you feel, Christopher? Um, lost, confused, confused. Uh, very strange actually um come in like you know you you get the album you see that you, you see the name you see the cover art you get a sort of kind of feeling right and then after that you get into the, you start the album and i feel like right off the bat they they already give you this piece of strange they give you this kind of putting you in this confused state asking where you're going to be tomorrow where you what are you going to be doing like kind of like this feeling of like what if everything ends today like like, what is your next move? What is your next idea? What is mm -hmm. your next plan? You know, like everything's so sudden. Yeah, I'm go on. <laughs> um, and it just, it, it felt, it, it felt like a good context setter in terms of how they're starting the album. Um, it's got this, this kind of like this, this humming sound. Um, you've got these chants in the background. It, it was good. I mean, uh, I like, I like uh, the guitar rift. There's a little bit of a guitar rift in there, which is uh, really good. It's not a little bit. It's a really nicely <laughs> detailed, like... Well, there's a part that I heard it more clearly in t for me. No, but, like, just the guitaring, it almost sounds like finger playing, if I'm not mistaken. Like, just I thought it was, like, like, a Spanish guitar. Yeah, like, I thought it sounded... which I believe is right. played with fingers. Uh, well, I might well be most guitars are. More uh, guitar picks. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> but that... the fingers. No, but I mean, like, the this part. Like, like it felt like it was, like, somebody's hand just, like, crawling over. Right. Or like, like that, just like, yeah, do, 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 I, I got do, do, that do, do, feeling do. as well. You know, like, oh, okay. really, but it sounded like, I don't know if it was samples. I think there were a lot of samples, but it also sounded like it could be live instruments, which is really fucking cool. It is. Um, yeah, that's definitely one of, like, the features of this album. Like, there's a lot of instruments. Um, but For yeah. me, I landed it at a four. Um, in terms of what the intro was, I really think it was a good starter. Yeah. You, Bonnie? Um, so, I mean, we basically just have, like, Deacon, um, and he just says, uh, where will you be tomorrow? Tomorrow, if it ends today, three, you know, he says that three times. 
Um, where will you be if it ends today? And he says that two more times. So, like, it sounds like vacation music because of, like, this, like, Spanish, gu- like, guitar. It sounds like summer. Um, it's nice. But it it's, like, at the same time, it's kind of asking this very serious question that makes you, like, self-reflect. And, like, in that kind of, like, relaxing, like, music, like, you can do that a little bit. So um, I give this a 4.25. Um, I thought it was a great start. Um, it's short. It's only a minute, three seconds. Um, it's a very, like, nice feeling that the song leaves you with. Um, yeah. So I think it, it totally serves both the role as an intro to the album and the way the, the, it ends and flows into the next track. It is just the perfect introductory piece for, like, that next track's instrumental that we'll, I guess we'll talk about then. But I, I oh, thought... Oh, hold on. Can I just say, I think we I don't think we said it, but um, this album came out on January 24, 2006, for anybody who is interested in the year. Yes, so Sorry. 2006. Yeah. Oh man, I'd already finished high school. <laughs> um, just finished high school. Yeah. But um, so it kind of has like this almost. I want to say like I don't want to say gospelly, but like you can feel almost this airy presence, like this almost serene feel to this little piece that they have, and the way he's asking the questions, "Where will you be?" It's this soft kind of singing, like it's supposed to just be almost like meditation music. Like mm-hmm. you're supposed to be a little pensive here, and it takes you a little bit away, right? And the way that it's asking these questions, it almost feels like, like, and I love it when it's the Christian influence stuff because I know about that. So it's almost like when uh, you would be asked questions in church, like if Jesus came back today what's going to be like in your life if the end of the world is going to happen today what's going on but then if you really look at just the state of how people behave i mean if the way people's motivations are today is indication of anything 2006 wasn't exactly the shining pot of stellar ambition you know right so on an ethical and moral corruption front it's an applicable question but it also kind of just asks you the question in the same way of like literally where your life is at like are you doing intelligent things in your life are you living the way you're supposed to be and mm-hmm. in one Making minute positive choices yeah and it just it's like it, it's like i feel like a good introduction for an album is supposed to a take you away from wherever you were in the world and bring you to the headspace you need to be in to digest this Absolutely. album. I think this and, does that. And I think this does this near flawlessly. Like, I'll be honest, it's not 100% my, like, go-to sound per se. Right. But I don't think it needs to be because, A, it's a minute, and it just brings me to this fucking mar- magical place. Like, it, it was like every time I've heard this intro, I've been like, wow, that is, that is beautiful sounding piece of fucking music that makes me excited to actually just sit there and listen to the rest of the project. So I guess it's a 4.75. I think it's one of the nicest and most interesting like introductions because it does so much with a minute. That's impressive to me. Like hats off to this introduction. Um, I have much more to go. So since when do I shut up? I don't know, never. No, my slang bang with a twang and hang on here low. You hear daddy hottest caddies with no steering collar. Well, what did you think about this track, Mr. Christopher? Uh, like we said uh, on the previous uh, track, it has a nice flow into this one. The transition was really good. Um, and we get this kind of more bouncy feel, this more uh, boom, old school boom bappy feel I, I, I hear. Uh, and it gets you kind of pumped up and ready for it. What I what I kind of felt from this track is that they're kind of like stating who they are, proving that they have flow, proving that they that they're kind of like the illest, the best, the best out there in what they do. I feel a little bit like um, uh, <clears throat> I forget who says this, but he goes, uh, "We flavor the music, chop this, screw that." That's how the uh, like chop this, screw that, you know. And then it's kind of like stating like the South introduced chopped and screwed style in Houston uh, in the nineteen nineties by DJ Screw. So that's something I learned, and I was like, okay, that's cool. They're trying to like bring that back and remind people like you know, we, start, we did this nice um uh, i hear some wu-tang inspired flows the way they kind of hit the beat and kind of chop it up a little bit i kind of feel like the way they punch their lyrics sometimes i hear some wu-tang in there hmm. okay i i, I don't know I, do. I was like outcast like i was really thinking i got more like... i got like method like not not method uh i think Ghostface. like i, I feel like i heard Ghostface in there like the way he kind of just like punches the lines and kind of like abrupt abruptly stops on certain flow on certain bars i don't know I like, okay i i, I well okay. i think the wu-tang you know i mean i feel like influenced wu- everybody yeah i just definitely didn't hear that 
but mm. that's fine. Mm. Uh, I felt like, again, like I felt like they're kind of just like reinstating why the South is dope. Uh, in verse two, I like uh, when I like when it was said, uh, if another broke split uh, spit about spending it all, I spit the gems that you splurge to put around neck. So give so save that pay. Oh, my God. So save that to pay back all your loans and debts. Right. Exactly. And <laughs> I like how he's kind of just calling out like. Like y'all are talking shit, y'all are making, y'all are start acting like you're making money and stuff, but you're really broke, and it's like you're not really doing what you're supposed to be doing to save the money and, and fix your problem. Hold on, that line is a little bit like more, right? You got the Mason Dixie line been across your mind like night sticks rain down on the game and fuck it up like white kicks. I might switch southpaw knuckle to the jaw if another broke, and he's kind of pointing out that it's almost like a modern day level of slavery in mm -hmm. the way that people are pissing away all of their money in this trap of sending it all into like I'd say white owned businesses not establishing themselves and then saying nah man don't be fucking ridiculous save your jetter and pay off your fucking debts you know I think not to say that you were wrong I just think it's a grander line with that right. earlier bit of context absolutely because um, they're fucking cunning with their linguistics of course of course <laughs> Uh, I also really enjoyed how they gave the DJ cut. Like, there was just a little bit of a part at the end where the DJ had the time to kind of shine, and they're kind of bringing back literally, that. It's, like, literally, like, two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. it's, like, half the song. Yeah. And, but I, but it's, it's nice, though. Like, it, it's kind of, for me, it felt like, you know, we get this, like, lyrical depth message, and then you get to kind of sit on it and just enjoy the vibe and kind of reminisce about it a little bit and okay. ponder it, you know? And I landed the track at a 4.5. I thought it was fucking great. And yeah. You? Um. So I mean, this is a really cool flow, cool sound. Um. I mean, this is basically just questioning, um, how ridiculous people are for saying that people from the ra from the south can't rap well. And he's like, "What? Like, you know, since when? Like, you know, because everybody that he knows and himself included, like, you know, kills it. You know." And he's like, "Yeah, we're we're doing great down here." Uh, you know, he's like, it's still like a rough life for us down here as well. Um, kind of talks about like the Underground Railroad, um, you know, in like which in like, um, like my memories, I think is maybe the first time it's been mentioned um, in anything that we've listened to, I think. I mean, at, at least I think for a long time. Um, so I like that there's like some history thrown in there. Um, plus, it's more relevant to the people um, from the South than like the music that's coming out of like L.A. and New York City. So it's like representing them and it's like making music for them to enjoy as well. Um, and around like two minutes, 35, we have like, you know, like the song changes like basically completely. And it sounds more like rock. It sounds more like a like a record playing with like the crackles and like the skipping almost. Um, and it just kind of sounds like um like the like the beat is built on top of that as well. Um, it was pretty cool, very dramatic. Um, and there's like this singer in it that sounds like really weird and like warped and strange. So um, like the second half of the song like didn't really do it for me, but the first half of the song was amazing. So um, I would have given it a higher grade, but I feel like for me the end kind of like ugh, dragged, dragged it down a little bit because it was half of the song. So it landed with a four um, and is good, and I think it's really cool and like weird and creative, and like he's standing up for like the South. All right, so <laughs> this song is amazing. By amazing, I mean it is an incredibly crafted piece of music first of all it's like a big fuck you to the rest of the world because <laughs> yeah. the south is here um i'm not gonna say like i said outcast earlier i feel like the way they bounced off each other it reminded me of the way big boy and you know, like Andre right. did, or the way goody mob did and i don't i don't know i felt they had that kind of flow that we've seen come out of these southern acts you know a lot more than because i feel like Ghostface is more choppy than we got anything right, on here. But, that's, I was, but like, I guess that's just what I'm saying. Like, it's literally just the choppiness and how he was abrupt and brutal with some I, lyrics. I felt like I, I, I kind of felt like some inspiration from there. And then I was, well, I don't know. That. I would say Scarface maybe because it kind of reminded me. Like, I don't uh, know. I'm really, saying like, I, for me, uh, even like, like I'm not saying that they didn't listen to Ghostface and weren't inspired by him. I'm just saying I did not personally hear Ghostface mm -hmm. in that. I heard some of these because. I love this fucking chorus though. Like, I hear him s talking about Southern folk can't rhyme. Some of y'all must be at your goddamn mind. Yeah, it's about time we got that shine. And at this time, I believe the South was really fighting. Um, like, yeah, ever since pocket full of stones, riding dirty in a Chevy, sitting heavy on chrome, ever since Goody Mob had 
food for soul and them dirty red dogs not hit the do just literally shouting out classic albums that the south has produced that are still just gone down like people have heard about it like stuff that has been praised for its lyrics and whatnot and like it's what it is done and you're saying y'all are fucking crazy you know that's the <laughs> south and here we are yeah you know and then like I really just enjoy the way that both um, what's fuck Deacon and Natty go back and forth over these verses with each other, and they just kind of cut each other off and create this like red MF kind of back and forth experience, which right. I found was really, really fucking enjoyable. Um, and they almost just keep the sentences going, like with enough lines to dry all the clothes you own, and then flips over to since when did the South, and then flips back to get pinned in a drought, to flips back to no, never been clever since Big Pen's been about reaching whatever levels that'll suspend any doubt that we as bad as yo kids when it's mic in our mouth. And it's just fucking hype because they're, they're spitting this message, the intensity that the South is important, that they are there, that they represent this shit. Right. And they are as capable as any other motherfucking MC in the game, you know? Then he does point out the sh uh, the struggle with it and just kind of contextualizes over the second verse. Like the first verse is a little bit to kind of focus on we are talented, we are the South, we are good. And the second verse is life is kind of fucked up. We have some shitty circumstances too. Our claim is just as valid as yours. Mm -hmm. And it really does a lot. And then there's this little bit, little teensy bit of Jay-Z from his Fade to Black documentary, The Making Behind It, where he's kind of pointing out how people are just afraid to be themselves because they're afraid that they won't be accepted, right? And I feel like the one thing I've noticed about people from the South is they do not give a fuck if you accept <laughs> them. They are unapologetically themselves, and it's so amazing, you know? Um, then we get that music, and I completely agree with Chris. It's a chance for No to have his piece and to introduce himself because we do have the other two guys getting their strong introduction, and then right. No gets his little chance. Um and I do think it's meant to kind of just give you a chance to reflect for a second. And I thought it was really well done, like a great extension. Like it kind of feels like a new song has kicked in, but no, it just feels like it's great. I get this a five on five. I thought it was like there's nothing about the song I'm going to change. Every lyric is fucking dope. Everything about the way they deliver it is fucking proper. It gets me hyped up. Like it just makes me want to bump my fucking head. Like I wish I, I wish this was a real reaction video. I know some of you want that, but we're not. it's, it's not fair use. But like I know I wish this was a real reaction video just so I could show you my fucking joy when I like heard this song <laughs> for the nice. first time. I really loved it. I, I'm so I was so excited. Um, I don't remember who requested this, but thank you so fucking much for the most recent person who did. Anyway, and all of y'all. Uh, so so nothing to give. Nothing to give. I should stop talking. All right, Bonnie. Chris looked like he wasn't ready for this. How do you feel about this track? Um, I love this one. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was great. Um, so basically, like the the premise of the song is that the night seems to call people um, to come out and do bad things, and you know, there's theft, there's killing, there's sex, like you know, you know, crazy things happen at at night. Um, and then there's like women and mobsters and like prostitutes and like you know other people that are on the streets at night, um, and then the people that engage in those you know activities and you know, gambling and you know all these things like you know. I guess they appear to happen only at night. And um, so it, it kind of sounds like a musical a, a little bit, like the way that it's told, the way that it flows. Um, it sounds like, I don't know, I thought I really loved it. Um, yeah, I, I just thought the story was really, really cool. And maybe I'll do a lyrical breakdown to this song sometime. If you guys want to see that, let us know in the comments. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I gave it a 5 on 5. I don't know if I said that. And you, Chris? Um... I like how they really gave the nightlife a, a, a voice in a way. Like, I know it, it, it has this kind of negative feel like they're trying to explain to us, like, this is, like, the negative stuff that happens in the nightlife. Um, these are things to kind of watch out for. This is what happens in my area, my environment, my hood. Um, but it it has this sort of, like, again, like, this music, this music, um, musical feel to it, The uh, this music. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. You said that. Um, and it, it's got this, this, it traps you in and kind of brings you through like these different adventures that you could see. Um, I like in, um, 
verse one when uh, Natty said, "Nightfall is a curtain call for uh, underhanded uh, theatrics. theatrics. Slugs travel through gun barrels from hands that had practice, practice. while rapists take the darkness and make alleys their mattress." mattress. Uh, yep. Jones in junkies twitching among hookers with coochies, coochies itching. itching. Like you really, they're not holding back, and they're really they're getting, talking about they're, everything. They're talking about everything, and to to also the the grim reality of a rapist using an alley and just having that picture, and it's like they don't even need the actual physical mattress. Like they'll just do it right there on the floor. You know, it's like you 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 kind of get this grim, eerie feel about uh, yeah. about, about the song. Um, I also like. Um, I like in the chorus, yeah, in in the chorus, there's like, what's, they're asking like a voice is going like, what's gone wrong as like, what changes from daylight to nighttime? What is it? Is it, is it because like the full moon? Is it that like kind of mm-hmm. ideology there? But that, that questioning of like how the world can be so different, like so wrong at night is just, was really cool. Um, he calls out BET and MTV in terms of like, um, he caught my eye in terms of like, glorifying some of these acts yep. i feel um they so most that was... definitely can be uh well, i mean look at like bet uh often and this is my perspective is it takes like a really heavy emphasis on the gang culture and if you are to subscribe to the idea that there is a plot in place to keep miseducation in black communities get them to be hyped up on you know liquor stores guns right. violence right. acting out wilding out etc it can be looked at a places like bet and mtv that let's say push the complete opposite side of music all the gangster shit and gloss over say a cutting linguist trying to offer some knowledge shit yeah so Absolutely. i think it was a really fair thing to say um, I like when Deacon said, uh, we no longer seek light to give us power. The voices get hu- gets hushed by the rush of the witching hour. Mm. It's like that, like that, 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 that thought that there's something more powerful than your brain, something that takes over you was just, it felt really, it like, felt really real, obviously, but like you could really kind of get that energy and, and feel that vibe. It was great. I gave well, it. It's like. Like it's like the witching hour is overnight, right? Right. So it's right. like at night, this like other force overtakes you and kills your common sense, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I landed it at a four on five, um, just out of preference, really. But everything else is good. That's fair. I mean, yeah, that's kind of what the song's about. We've touched on a lot of the premise, but even just to go back to where Chris was at with the Coogees itching and they're describing like it, whatever, spreading diseases, spreading their knees in different positions. I mean, just the idea, like, you know, like we know that STDs get spread a lot and whatnot. So like you just have this like darkness, this like all these nefarious activities going on. And, and it's like identifying specific social issues in almost every line, in the abyss, children that get lost in the mix. So, you know, kids fall through the cracks of a system where people are probably born and not wanted and all this other situations or gunned down for fresh kicks or opposite colored fists. And then it's like, nope, nope, nope. That kid got killed for his fucking sneakers. Yep. <laughs> or because yep. the red and the blues or pick your, your situation. Yeah. And the way they describe it, again, it's almost like a journalist. And when I say a journalist, I don't mean journalistic perspective. I mean almost like guys with journalist degrees wrote this for like the New York Times or some shit. And they're just using apt and specific poetry to like put it through. It's demons brood led manners behind this, he, and then he goes on to point out, you know, the media and politicians are liars and that they kind of create this like system. And it's a it's really, I think, a really important song for what it's trying to describe. Um, when the night falls and the lights off, you'll get robbed where I live. Crooks and robbers, villains and mobsters. The night's got nothing to give. It's like shit, man. I mean, the night here in Montreal isn't quite that I bad <laughs> so, i mean there's definitely gambling <laughs> hookers and blow but yeah it's, it all still exists I we mean, say this it's inevitable was, we say this but i i, I found but out like, there was a shooting in our in our area a couple days ago i mean yeah. there is the occasional act of violence right. but like montreal's homicide rate at the end of the year is like 30 people die yeah. from like yeah. violence at the end of every one of our 30 people that get caught so let's say triple the number for the well, stuff I think no it's one homicides. hears about you I think know? homicides but like that's what i'm saying is like you compare it to anywhere like this and it's we don't have problems compared to that neighborhood i think, it, I think it's also i mean i'll make a comment that it's probably part of like we having also guns have gun laws uh, yeah. that are, <laughs> make it real hard to just get one yeah um but yeah 
the song kind of goes on from there and it really does kind of I, I feel like Deacon's a little more of a religious background and he's kind of taking on like this loss of moral consciousness that seems to happen like speaking, overnight speaking for the higher up in a sense well I don't know like uh, the voice gets hushed by the rush of the witching hour the touch of the wicked cowards that lurk in the dusk in even tide heathens rise I mean heathens is a very specific word that mm -hmm. is like people who are not subscribing to the religious norms or the ethical things so it's outsiders and shit which it's excellent poetry don't get me wrong um, searching for bucks so you know people are willing to do anything for dollars and anonymous and corrupt assure obscurity it's a spell under its veil in pure security so I feel like the language he's using here like impure or heathen or just you know it's just there's this sense biblical. of it's not there's no god in these people's lives but he's not doing it in the most preachy way he's actually doing it in maybe the best possible the way it is to do it with just aloofness we love it in our spirits because we're suckers for lust most even fucking it we're too ashamed to be just Oh, I love it. And like, I mean, the nighttime is when most people have sex, right? Oh, man. Do you know what I learned? Uh, the best advice given to me about Tinder from a, a fellow that I work with, <laughs> he um, said, you only have your 20 matches or whatever, right? So don't even go on unless it's 11.30 p.m. or later because nobody on Tinder at 11.30 is on it for the best of possible reasons. Usually that's when it's at night and you're a little more uh, feeling like whatever. And you got a couple of glasses of wine. And then, oh, <laughs> this guy's here. I normally wouldn't, but he, you know, and then that's the best time to go on Tinder because if you match and you're there in that moment, you know, it's a little bit better than giving her a chance to think. <laughs> Which is um, Tinder. I guess. <laughs> That's why it's more effective if your goal is to smash. Yeah. Anyway, the nighttime, as we're illustrating here, is a, a, a time for less good judgment. I don't know. I love this song. I thought the chorus was really beautiful. The the, the music, I didn't like it quite as much as the last track. Like, the last track's beat really hit me in a beautiful way. So I just want a little teensy I feel bit like less. It was just more theatrical, this one. This no, one had more uh, of a, like a cinematic sound to it, a cinematic feel to it. Mm -hmm. So well, it's like. I, I feel like it's more that the stuff that they're drawing on to make this beat is a little less in line with what I want to listen to than, say, the last beat. Because it's really like. This shit's masterfully constructed, man. It's a four and a half on five to me. It is beautiful to listen to. It's another deep, powerful message. And what I think is interesting is we go from in the last track, so we have the South, and that life is kind of hard in the South too. And then the uh, instant thing they're going to do is to start off their story by like setting the context for what the night is like in the South to really follow up. Like it wasn't a so of the two things they could have stuck with, it's not about them. They're just legitimizing their role as storytellers in this very first song, which they had to do because we as people are like, well, why am I going to listen to them if we don't think they're good? So they start us off, point out they're from the South, they're ill, move into the social issues. Now we're already three tracks in. I don't know about them. They're gone. It's all about the real shit. And that is awesome. Thank you again for recommending the Cunning Linguists. <laughs> I'm going to say Cunning Linguist as much as I can. All right. Um, so, yeah, four and a half on five. I guess uh, we're at what? What's the next one? Caved In featuring CeeLo Green. Yeah, baby. When I'm seeing inpatient critical streets are there from the killings, I'm like, damn, lots hot, not from... All right, Chris, how do you feel about this song? And um, it's not about the boys in, was it Thailand that just escaped no, from? No, oh. I, ha, 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 ha. Too soon? No, they escaped. Yeah, I, I know, I know, they're all fine, they're all fine. And like Philip DeFranco just, said, just, we should remember like, that. I feel that like they're diver. coming at me like, no, Chris, I thought about that. Like, okay. <laughs> no, but we should remember yeah, unless that. Unless that happened in 2006. we need to remember the diver that lost his life, like Philip DeFranco yes. said. Are we going to take a moment? Yes. Okay, anyway, let's go on. Okay. Um, from what I get from this from this song, it's about um, being trapped, being trapped within yourself. From what I'm understanding, kind of asking questions about the struggle of life. Um, <clears throat> I get like, I'll be honest, I, I really may have missed the mark on this one, though. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> like, I may have really missed the mark, but I do I do feel like it's it's about being trapped and, 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 and being, like, you know, caved into to things that you don't understand. Um, I feel like CeeLo, CeeLo Green did very well in terms of the singing and having that soft voice that was very pleasant to listen to. 
Um, I like uh, I like when it was said. I'm seeing impatient parents blaming unsuspecting children, and I'm seeing impatience, critical <laughs> streets, and dead are from the killings. I feel like it's. It, I got this sense where like kids are being blamed. Kids are kids are not. Allow me to elaborate. A D D. Also me. No, 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 but think about that <laughs> statement. Just think about that I statement. Mean, yeah, ADD, it's basically ADHD. like parents are like, oh, I'm not patient enough to deal with my kids. So there's something fucking wrong with them because they're not growing up fast enough or they're not behaving properly. Man, I kind of feel bad that I didn't get that because like, that's me here. It's but, ironic a little bit. Right? <laughs> no, but like, yeah, I'm certain it's more granular than that. But that was the first example I thought of. Mm-hmm. Well, in any case, in any case, um, like like I said, I didn't, I don't, I think I did kind of miss the mark on this one, but I did give it a four point two. I I like they're very consistent in the flow. They're very consistent with the word play, the way that they they do, um, the way that they kind of put their lyrics. Allow together. me to say this again: they are cunning linguists. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. I think that's what you were trying to convey there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> What did you give it? I gave it a 4.2 on 5. Okay. And how did you feel, Miss Bonnie? Um, I mean, this is pretty good. Uh, this is about the, the struggles in life that he's seeing. Um, he's commenting on all these, like, problems and, like, these struggles. And it's hard. And he doesn't really know what to do because, like, the rich people and, like, the government don't support, uh, like, them and, like, their, like, programs, that, you know, that can help them, like, to, like, get out of this hole that they're in. Like, they're stuck in this, like, place that they can't get out of. Um, and like, you know, he just is kind of saying like, you know, hold on to hope and, you know, things will get better. Um, so I, it's really, really great. I really enjoyed this one. It feels very raw and emotional and honest. Um, I gave it a five on five. Amazing. I did not give it a five on five. My grade is a little bit closer to Chris's with 4.25, but I would like to say, I think this album's a bit of a concept album, like a linear story concept album that gets like driven for it. Yeah, but yeah. not like your typical movie, but more of an ideological exploration of like arguments. Well, there's Plato's, or I think it was Plato's Cave. It could be something related to that. Well, I meant like if you look at just as the songs go on, I feel like the album is making, the entire album is making a point, And every song is structured in a way where it takes it builds on the point that was brought into the last song. So the last song presented that the darkness of the nighttime, um, you know, brought out the worst in people, we'll say, right? right. And they live inside that darkness right. of a cave. Wait, but when you, I was going to go the other thing uh, or a different direction with it. I take this song as trying to describe how people's perceptions and their mindsets and the way they believe is caved in as he's putting it out. But like, are these, but from what I'm understanding, are these the same people that we could assume are the ones that are chilling at night? Yeah. Okay. Like it's an observation. Like this whole thing is a satirical observation so, on society, right? What I get is, is like first they came in and let us know we're moving into this topic in a sense of we're talking well, about nightlife the, and stuff like well, this. Well, so so in the first track, it's like we're the South. We have something right. to say, and the, the world is kind of corrupt. And then the second track, you know, it's a little bit more like what the world is. So the second track was nothing to give. That's the nighttime song, right? Right. And then that track is kind of going and saying this is the environment a little bit more, the kind of crazy shit we see going on in the night. And now here he's taking those people that he just introduced and us to. And kind of going into their brain. Yeah, and he's saying this is a little bit of what we perceive to be their motivations. It's just, To me, it's satire. It's, it's basically South Park except – moral and not crude cunning yeah and with <laughs> linguistics but so is south park you could define matt stone True. and trey parker as cunning linguists absolutely but um but just like lord why is everybody's puzzle missing pieces so the way they're seeing it right off the jump people just aren't wired correctly to something off in the way perceptions you know like struggling grinding greaseless no rhyme or reason in sight seeing pain in all their eyes i'm seeing that often we lie lost in our cries and then you know the impatient parents and shit so right away I mean, maybe it's just because I've been reading so many self-help books and shit, like uh, how to win friends and influence people and all that bullshit. But like, he's kind of describing how people act in this. They complain a lot. They're negative. They have this pain, this darkness inside of them. They're not happy. It feels like everyone's missing something from whatever, which leads them into those 
behaviors that were previously right. described and he goes into like like you know like i'm seeing you know inpatients critical that's people in like hospitals and shit streets are dead patients or yeah or like whatever uh, streets are dead from the killings i'm like damn block's hot not from the ozone so the block's hot because of the violence in this shit but he also is still commenting on the environment showing some awareness sneaky sneaky i see what you did there um through cameras, cops watch these little boys hold chrome. And then you're, like, probably considering all like of the cool. cop cameras or, like, whatever. And, you know, just seeing these kids with fucking guns and shit. Or, but what do we do? Most problems done been discussed, but we talk about actions on the back end and hush. I guess most of y'all listen to Rush, long as Rush is in Rush uh, Limbaugh or whatever, the conservative political commentator at the time yep. who was basically like Bill Mayer and those other fucker. Not Bill Mayer. Um, the one that got... Bill O'Reilly. He's like Bill O'Reilly and those kinds of fucking guys. I don't really like Bill Mayer either. He's just a fucking dumbass pothead. But like for the most, he used to be cool. Bill Mayer was fucking cool like 10 years ago. And then he just got fucking loaded on anti-God speech and fucking weed. I don't know. I lost interest in him. That's not what we're talking about though. Uh, but yeah, so we just kind of have him, like they're just kind of describing like, sorry, uh, we just, kind of like we have this like message that's been going around people are just kind of believing in the false narratives that are being discussed um Fake news. all of these conversations the hood the crack era like everything that is a living reality has been a subject of political conversation for mm -hmm. pretty much my entire life all 30 years of it so i mean at this point what do you do when it's been you know talked to death and you know i like when it's like fl we slip in far under the gouillard line in grim tombs we some dim stars batteries full barred at birth but it's hard to stay charged on earth so like the fucking environment that you're in you come up pure toxic light full of energy ready to go but it drains you and Oof. shit and it's just fucking deep and it comes in and it takes your like and i'm saying more of an ethical spiritual kind of draining and shit you know because it makes me think of like slipping into like a basement and like finding entertainment in like a low and yeah. uh, by yourself and like and, and soulless there. like grandmas used to bust to church bus us to church humming hymns stretch out a fat meal on the table from something slim now we starving faith on the back of a carton Ooh, you know like a pack of smokes or whatever mm -hmm. Uh, to find I took it, it as I took it as like the missing person on a milk uh, carton. I think mm. it could be like a double entendre, right? I right. do think that they're cunning and they're linguists. Um, <laughs> oh, this is gonna die I'm not, fucking quickly. It, I don't care. This nope. is this is what Take it is, it man. Every time we do one of their albums, my friends, this is not the last album we are doing with these folks. Now Did we you start see his eyes. Did you no. see his eyes? Yeah, because I'm starving for love. knowledge. This is great music, man. Uh, it is. Um, well, lyrically, on boulevards in the South Park. Get it. Uh, watches movie arts paint and visuals i don't know if that was it it just said south park so but both arts in the south park it was a special anyway four point i don't know i lost my train of thought 4.25 um stylistically the beat and stuff again it's not like my go-to my favorite in terms of it it's a good sound it is really fucking well made that's why i'm not handing out these fours these are like to me a four is a good song but i don't necessarily fully like it there is there's nothing on this album I didn't at least like a little bit in terms of hearing it. I, I actually, we were listening to it before. It restarted, and we went like three or four songs in, and I could have just listened to the whole album again. We yeah, did. it's very nice, like, background kind of music. It's, it's very, so like, soothing, good. and it's it's cool. So, yeah, this is a 4.25 because at a track-by-track track level, I might not be drawn to this one as much as some others, but it definitely is not one to skip, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, if there was an hourglass, well, there's an hourglass is the next song. All right, this is the next track. It's called Hourglass. Chris, sorry, I won't be like that. Bonnie, I love it when you start us off. All right. Um, so this kind of sounds like he's hanging on to his youth and refuses to grow up a little bit. Um, he's kind of depressed about, like, accepting adulthood. I mean, nobody wants to do that. But, I mean, we all have to do it, right? So he's kind of praying about it, and it's a pretty cool-sounding song and, like, realistic because we all kind of have to go through this, like, youth to adulthood and accepting, like, responsibilities and whatever. So um, I gave it a 4.25 on 5. And you, Chris? Um, I didn't really like this track as much. Um, I feel the beat overpowers some of the voices at times on this track. Um... I like uh, Brenda Lee's "Everybody But You" sample. That was that was good. 
Uh, but again, it's just overpowering on the vocals. Um, I feel like the first verse with Deacon was kind of explaining how women kind of got him out of whack. Like he's a little bit in love and he's kind of all distressed or whatnot and he doesn't really know how to kind of like handle it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, verse two, I feel like is... Uh, okay. So verse two is well because I I don't I don't really have much to say about this song because I didn't really like it I it it was just all right so what'd you give it I gave it a three point nine but I do like I feel like ver- okay so go on I do like when he says we dead wrong many days and nights trying to s- trying strange things from Jane to Kane and variants uh, of the same change right, get, get trapped, trapped you off the map, map no Peter, Peter Pan, Pan scenes where everything's tight and lily whiter than clan dreams I like I liked that that was nice So, but I gave the song a 3.9 well I felt like the uh, the first verse was kind of I think I feel like they're trying to bring you back to when you're a young person like mm-hmm. a, a mm-hmm. late teenager early adult and you're trying to or no teenager and you're going through puberty and changes in this environment that they've painted for you in this world of bad marketing and stuff and now they're I think they're trying to convey how easy it is to kind of get into some mischief so you have deacon uh i believe he does the first verse i actually freaking forgot to write down who did which verse in my notes so my bad um uh then uh the waiting for growth to show up and hope to manifest at 3 a.m i'm uh awaiting uh, sorry i'm awaiting awake to hand me rest fate to send caress and a face that i can feel with weight from heavy breast and a brace that helps me chill So he's literally sitting up there by himself in bed at 3 a.m. horny and lonely and wanting to, like, you know, get into man and have some nice boobies next to him. You know, and, like, I I appreciate that. Sometimes when you wake up at 3 a.m., it's comforting to have somebody there if you have that person there. Um, Grace, that uh, human males can't feel unless he builds with a female until time stands still. We take off our shells and chill all before finger learn bodies. We got blind man skill. Now, that's fucking interesting because it really paints the picture of two young people, innocent still. Like, it's not no wham, bam, thank you, ma'am shit. It's that sweet, slow romance awkwardness as Mm -hmm. you're just discovering what sex is all about for the first time. And it's just pure um, desire for everything, you know? And uh, she speaks no evil, but says whatever after shaking a bed feather, still a praise uh, together, etc. You know, it's just like this beautiful fucking fantasy and whatnot but it also kind of sounds a little bit like a bit of a distraction and the clock's something that i'll learn who i am as i learn we're chilling out watching our hourglass sense so you get the sense that he's desiring for all of these experiences they're going to help him grow into something as time's kind of passing and it's almost like i feel like it's trying to capture the idea that you're waiting on things or you're trying to or like (laughs) you're like trying to like wait for those particular triggers you experiment with these magical things like we'll find in the second verse like you know spam pubescent ears uh sorry uh spam pubescent ears blessed with peers i could trust spinning records to a game of checkers if the dust laughter mm-hmm. rushed out the must clutch in my stomach ass burning from fast learning not cash earning so here it's like you get the sense again him and his friends are just some tomfoolery some bad shit's going on they're not really doing the right things per se right. but they're just kind of involved with their world in this environment and experimenting and trying to figure some shit out but don't actually you know whatever you know trying to get something ripe a nice queen stay strong and fight life like sudan kings pray to make sense for giving and to make sense out of living lord give me patience to gain wisdom please it's almost like this this prayer this desire so i feel like this song is trying to further in the idea so on top of that caved in mentality so people are kind of caught up into brainwashing it focuses in a little bit more on that part where we all seem to be waiting for better circumstances rather than doing the right things to create better circumstances. And I think it was just an elaborate song about distractions and a waste of time, but done through the allure of how these things really are just kind of fun and novel and interesting. Nice. I love the calm, stripped down kind of beat. It really was like a really nice contrast to some of the stuff we've seen. It kept the album a little bit more pumped, a little bit more interesting. Um, all I have to say, I really enjoyed this one more than the last one. Uh, I give it a four and a half on five. Really fucking cool. Cool. Well, let's listen to a song about me. Yeah, beautiful girl. My love, so now I'm constantly taking shit. Cause now three times a week they want to test our relationships. All right. So the guy on Genius who wrote the fucking summary of this song and annotated shit, like he was in love with how every fucking, and I say that guy 
in the way he described it without every line in this song oh, or at least the it first, was all one guy it felt like it because oh. you could see the excitement and the tone of this person as they <laughs> annotated a bunch of shit it's like every line in natty's verse at least natty's i don't i couldn't tell as much for deacons is could be about a woman <laughs> but could also be about <laughs> weed <Yeah. laughs> and it's like i tried to stay all the way playo when it came to game but got benched in a sense when it came to jane so we'd got him a little bit off from his normal life his or the woman, daddy life. you know, he came in, but then he met a woman or weed and the impact they had on him is, well, I mean, it makes sense. Like, it I'm could not, be you know, both. He, could, it he could came be both. into the game, he comes up into the club, he's ready to spit bars, but then he, he yeah. met Jane and now he's like, yeah, I'm going to, and then, or, and then I, I got high. Exactly. And then I got I high. This, yeah. And then I got high. I can't explain the deep <laughs> breaths <laughs> that I take <laughs> in her <laughs> presence. Well, you uh, can you can easily explain those if it's weird. Nervousness, but you, I found she's pretty. You want you're like hyperventilate, like oh my god, oh yeah. my god, what do I say? What do I do? Or, or <laughs> I found recollection. <laughs> oh okay, my god. Okay, Chris, I have to, that's loud. Um, I have found <laughs> recollections connect to every ounce of her essence. Get it? Ounce of her essence because it's weird, but or it's a person. Full I love full. her till she joined with the air up above her. I mean, like it's 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 I like, I it's like, like <laughs> look, it's pretty creative and it's pretty clever. It's it's, okay. it's something like a cunning linguist might write. No, right. I, I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, I like that because if if saw by the law in my car they grabbing me harassing me asking me where did she come from have me see a counselor asking questions that plumbed them and i like the fact that now it kind of sounds a bit like a hooker like a street walker that he's with you know okay. but like if the the cops see him with this person this woman this drug or whatever you know the next thing he has to like go see a fucking drug counselor or some shit because it's illegal right yeah whatever it's fucking dumb well it'll soon be legal in canada but i say legal because the landlords will have a right in quebec to ban us from smoking inside or on our balcony and then the city has the right to ban us from smoking in public so it might get legalized and then it becomes 30 times harder to consume with more ways for you to go to jail go canada um i'm really we'll see we'll see that's the laws as they're written my friends it's fucked up you nothing's should... nothing's st starting yet yeah we'll so see. october 17th woo uh, Deacon comes in with next. I know we break up roaches from cigars. We done finished. I mean, okay, that one's a little less about everything, a little more about weed. <laughs> Jane doing things that made me search my soul. Is a young one. She's an old freak that cuts slow. Fair enough. Double entendre. I love it. Right now you a hellified no. Leave her right now. You get a hellified no. I guess I need her. That's a double edge cuts throats okay i love the fact that they don't necessarily paint weed in this uh glorified it's amazing thing they kind of sell it like a woman that's bad for you like somebody that's going to excite you and take you to esoteric fucking places but also might not be the best use of your time and uh our culture whether or not you consume the drug it's not the point a lot of people abuse it and a lot of people become apathetic idiots when they smoke a lot of weed and our culture spits it like this is the most magical fairy tale this is the greatest shit ever and pretends that there's nothing bad that happens because of weed and i i love the fact that they're trying to present almost like this balanced perspective but if a bunch of teenagers are trying shit in the last thing one of those things that they did mention trying was jane so it keeps the story moving along as we flow into focusing on how marijuana and women simultaneously become again this strange it's distraction, distraction yeah. that these cunning linguists and have, a temptation as well mm -hmm. exactly that they put together to kind of again go maybe it's these things that lead us to that nighttime people that lead us you know there's almost like sins. a really interesting story um I thought it was a little bit goofy, a little bit fun. Like it's a it's a good song. I feel like it's one of those ones where once the flashiness wears off, it kind of looks a little more regular compared to some of the other ones. I mean, I landed it at a four on five. I think it was very like creative. I and like it more than that, dude. I mean, you're allowed to like it at a four. <laughs> I give it a four point two five though. I, I that's my like range where like this is really good, but it's not great compared to some of the other tracks on the album. Fair because of the wittiness, this is the least witty one to me. A lot of these are obvious lines, you know, but it's clever that they kept it going for a whole song. It's clever, but it's not really that clever. Not as cunning. It's not as cunning <laughs> as I would hope from these linguists. And, True. Uh, um, so 
yeah, I mean, this is just basically like a fun, jazzy sounding song. Um, it kind of sounds like a um, like a live performance that's maybe been remixed, and like it sounds kind of weird, but like really cool at the same time. Um, you know, basically, as you discussed, it's just basically about um, their love for weed, Mary Jane. Um, and it's a really like cool song. It's a great lead up into the next song, which is um, Inhale. Um, but yeah, I mean, I gave this a, a 4.25. All right. So Inhale, interlude. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so this one samples Lenny White's chapter three for the guitar riff and a tribe called quest suck up for the inhale lyric genius. That's my genius annotation. Uh, no, I stole it from genius. I wanted to cite my source. Um, in this interlude, it very much confirms that this Jane person is of the Mary Jane variety. That's uh, marijuana for all of you who didn't know weed pot. There's a lot of names. There's only like okay. 623 names for it. There's that poster. I don't know if you ever saw it where it's just all Seen the weed it. names and it, it like it fucking makes a weed leaf or whatever. And it's all like the it's fucking sick. Um, it goes, say something is happening. I think I'm seeing things. We're entering a whole new world. Relax and enjoy. Inhale, inhale. We're in another world. If that isn't getting high, I don't know what else it is, man. But I, I like it also as, again, as like a context setter, like, Yes, they're playing on the fact that they're smoking, they're entering into another world, but we're the album is going to change now is what I kind of took from this as well. Yeah. Like we're getting into some maybe more weird, funkier shit that's about to happen. If we are thinking of weed, you know, weird, funky shit might happen. I But mm -hmm. I, I'm still trying to, I'm, I'm still thinking it's going to be like there's going to be some more serious messages, some more like deeper meanings in this part of the album now that we're getting into a like a newer world i landed it at a four it's beautiful music hmm. um so i mean this is just clearly like designed for you to smoke weed too um you know it's kind of weird um i did like the horn um that was featured in it because i think it's really cool like all the instruments that they're like kind of playing with um it definitely sounds like loopy and high and whatever i gave it a three on five it's not my favorite but uh, it was all right this shit's a five it is so oh, perfectly wow. okay. fucking composed of beautifulness. You sit there and it really just, if you happen to be like in the right frame of mind when you're listening to this, it really does feel very nice. Mm -hmm. It's got like, a, you have some good headphones on and you're lost and it's just playing out. The you're layering is like a very, like a festival type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like you just kind of get in there and it really, I think it's a good interlude, right? Because this album's lyrical and dense, and it is a bit of a, a theme movie. And I think Chris is right. It is supposed to serve as a transitionary point. Like, we've got the first act is now done. We've got all that context. And then this happens leading into maybe something else. Like, you get high and your brain wanders off or whatever. And the rest of the album kind of plays out. So I think it serves us really well. But I thought this was just fucking excellent to listen to. Like, it felt like just this fusion of hip-hop with old-timey guitar sounds in such a cool fucking way ways it's beautiful to me i i loved it five on five y'all heard me say that already but maybe it's because after smoking some weed you get hit in the brain cells Even jet, through the play bins, when will this fate end? Parents can't make the only thing you put passion in is zigzag passage packaging Whoop! i know people like that I'm just going to say that I definitely know people like that. I may once upon a time have been similar to people like that. And what does it mean? It means that the only thing that you have passion for in your entire life is to roll another fucking joint because mm. it's a zigzag packaging, right? And the rhyme is so flawless. And in that one line, it says so fucking much. I mean, sure, the next time, swallow Oxycontins to find solace. But I feel like it's also trying to bring – I feel like they're also trying to bring light to like – why is it that people are feeling like the only passion they have is is in rolling joints? Like, where is that happiness mm. coming from? Where because did they lose you are it? Uh, living in a world <laughs> no different from myself. Exactly. I also feel like um, they they do a nice reference in terms of going to school, in terms of being of growing up in school. If, if this is right, this is the same. well. That's a. Yeah. I think Deacon's verse is more of that. I think each verse is a little bit like well, different. No, well, Deacon's a... verse starts off with the womb. He starts off. He was manifested. Oh, right. He was manifested in an egg, developed in a womb, born out of a moon belly, first day yeah. of doom. Right. So he. I feel like there's this context setting up of always feeling trapped, of always being like in this type of cell, like in the womb, in the belly, and then you come out. You're in a world, but then. 
he runs up and he turns into an incubator where, again, like another box, another trap type sort of thing. Um, and then verse 2, um, I forget. Is Drugs, it? marketing, fashion, all the different things. But he tried school, to be like. he brings up, you're like you're being suspended in school, right? He brings up the fact of being suspended in school. And then the only thing that's not going to be, the only thing that's. Uh, the, the, Just future cubicles and retirement homes. You can't, but you can't see it happening. Live savagely. Only thing you put passion in it. I think it's like, I think. You're right. It is more of that late teenage, early well, adulthood age that, group. There's that double entendre of the But I message. think like the school's more like like a one-off lyric in a bigger package. I feel like he was talking about <laughs> like he was talking about like suspensions and everything. That kind of given like a, like a school life in terms of the second verse. Well, I think he's just trying and to. And then like, at the end, he's like the, with, it, with the bullet. Like you're not the only thing trapped in a, in a chamber. And when he goes, you know, you're in a cell well, again, and now again, like, school is age, like a trap. But I feel like I feel like. The, it's setting an age and the right, school is right, part, right, of, right, right. part of the bigger Can't picture right because like the the song also touch that verse also touches on drug use um, yes. fashion brands tv um just i guess pure pressure as you lay on a box spring in an old mattress uh choices blocked off childhood gone just future cubicles and retirement homes but you can't see it happening live savagely and whatever so i mean that's t that's all from the second verse right mm -hmm. that's that's actually no the first time we've seen the the producer dude rapping and whatnot and so it's interesting that the only time we've really seen him come on he's like drugs are bad but the other two aren't saying drugs are bad so much you know which I, I noticed that, and I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> but I, I think you're right in the sense that there is kind of this age transition that maybe I didn't convey correctly at first. I think there definitely is. I think it is like... And that, that first verse is like teaching you like, you know, born out of boom belly, first day doom, crying out like you want to be put back in there. Like your first thing you do is bad. And then parents can't make grand. They're struggling. You're seeing all these bad things happening. And then the chorus is just inspected decks lie and living in a world no different from well, myself. Inspected repeated. deck is where I also kind of confirm. Uh, for me, I felt like I was confirming my Wu-Tang theory when he started working with hmm. inspected deck. I was like, oh, he met up with the Wu's. Well, no, that's just sampling that one lyric. It's off of like cream or something else off of 36 chambers I, it's oh, living I, in a world no different from a cell right yeah. i know that but isn't isn't inspected deck have a verse on this I no think? it's no the producer is the third guy oh. inspected deck is just sampled oh. on this anyhow we'll move on my bad and then in the third verse, Nafi kind of takes it a little bit farther in life. And I feel like, you know, smoking cools out that box. It, uh, shit ain't cool. And detention, no flinching. That shit ain't school. Coke sales for a quick... Oh, the third verse seems to be more about, like, school and just being kind of useless and, and kind of shitty and stuff. You know? Uh, but then, I think I think, I think think it goes back to what you were saying earlier, though. Like, they're, 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 I guess they're trying to target teenagers. Well... Like, in terms of, like, of, like, the, like, the consistent, like kind of growing up and stuff i think they're trying to just picture like because for me what i got is starting from in the womb and in the belly and then kind of getting the high school scene and then kind of doing all the tension and stuff like that i feel like they're kind of just showing this trap mentality like we yeah. we as a person as an individual are have just always been in a box school but just to, school, to four kind of walls a room i think four walls, that another like, thing they're trying to do is is how it's a little bit isolated is because of how he ends it with even the tails thrown in these bars can't be confined just be patient nothing in life is by design so even these verses that are by design aren't really anything more than just separate ideas and stuff that right. are strung together. But I also feel like when he says uh, the things are not our by design, it means like we're not born like that. We're not born. Well, by well, nothing in like li we're like we created no, but the, the expression. Nothing in life is by design means things are a little like we can't plan these things. Things aren't so random no, or foreseeable. Like. Uh, things not look like set in stone. things look to be a certain way, and that's the design of how it is. But it, it's not necessarily that thing. So even though it feels like you're living in a world no different from a cell, at the end of the day, it's not necessarily that. And I think the song kind of is saying that even. So it's kind of commenting on just even though all these influences and these things draw you in a certain direction or make you feel a certain way and you end up in situations where maybe you drop out of school and end up doing crime and shit. I think it's trying to say that all of this, even if this is the plan, this is what it means to, you're not supposed to make it past 25, any of these things. That's not the plan. That's just, that's maybe the design, but nothing in life is by design. It's almost like saying fuck the system in a very convoluted well, way. Also, that play, like, on on through the play pens, uh, when will this fate end? Like, even, like, I, I look at play pens and I feel caged in. I feel, 
I see bars, I feel, I don't know, I'm just no, I mean, there's, to stretch my there's, point there's, there's, No, but there are tons of ideas where I, it's kind of say, like, all of these different circumstances make you feel trapped, so you end up doing these bad things. Could and it also be, like, you're forced to as well? Like, no, like, if, if you want to kind of I think the that entire way, like, point of the song is that you're, it, it's to say you're not forced to. It says that it looks this way, but it's not that way, yeah. is, is the crux of the song, right? Yeah. So all of this is context setting. So why did you commit those crimes? Well, I saw my parents were starving. Well, I saw this was happening. Well, I was smoking pot. Well, I, so it's, it's like a justification. So it's, of it's why like it's taking all of the excuses people would, not excuses, but reasons people would have to, like, end up in a certain way and then kind of on the very end of the song saying but it doesn't have to be this way and anyway, i gave this song a five i thought it was fucking brilliant really mm-hmm. fucking 4. interesting 5. that's pretty cool um i i feel that like this uh like that every situation in life keeps you in like a cell or a prison like if you make kind of like the wrong choices so i think that he's saying like you know if this is like the circumstances you know that you're like put in and it feels like you know everybody's in the same circumstances as you that you know you you can make different choices you can make better choices maybe um you know if you're trapped you know because you have babies or because you're involved in crime or you know if you get old and you're put in an old folks home like these are all like different types of like prisons i think that's what he's saying um and i think that it's sort of like like a sad criticism um and like of compromise uh, and complacency like on the society and like he's kind mm. of saying like you know you guys could have done better you guys could have been better he's like but you're settling for this and you know he's kind of saying like you guys can yeah just do better it's one of those kind of songs so it's um it's real it's a cool song i gave it a four on five so it's like he got high and got a little enlightened started to think a little bit differently maybe yeah and then you know what the conclusion of all of his musing was America, America loves, loves gangsters. gangsters. Loves bodies, Pacino, Captain Sinos for shooting the club lobbies while 80 dance controls bankroll. Well, Christopher, these days they want to be criminals more than they want to commit crime. And it's not just crime, it's the way of the world. That is the best fucking chord. I was so happy to hear that. <laughs> I never heard that before. I don't remember where it was taken from. It was taken from some fucking movie or another. But it's really great. Uh, really, It's just basically saying like everyone wants to like live a certain way like they all want to be well, criminals they, uh, because it's cool sounding because it's fucking nice or whatever but it's also glorified mm-hmm. it's all like scarface uh, and and all these other things that we see like it's i, I mean feel i like think like th- i don't think that's what the quote is saying i think what the quote is saying is that everybody wants to have the label oh the, the of, quote at the beginning yeah okay i'm, yeah. I'm not speaking on that because i think that's ba- that quote is saying that like everyone wants to be a thing like you can say everyone wants to be a rapper do you, do you write songs and release them? No. Nope. Well, okay, but so you want to be a rapper, but you don't want to rap. Oh, so you want to you want to go work, but you don't want to do any work. Yo, know, you want to do these things. You want to be a criminal, but you don't want to commit crime. Oh, so, so how are you a criminal? You know, like, and then it's just kind of pointing out that it's not just crime. It's it's everybody doing everything, and it's true. So many people are like, I want to do this. You ever bring it to fruition? I don't know. I said I wanted to make podcasts. Look how much time has passed. Just throwing it out there. Um, how do you feel about this track? <clears throat> I I like this song. I think it was a very creative way of bringing to light uh, social media, movies, Hollywood, and this ideology of being a gangster. Um, they they talk about how like um, <clears throat> I guess, like I was saying earlier, like I feel like uh, we glorify this ideology of being a gangster, being rich and famous, and having that type of life, that boss, that boss captain life. Um, there's a line where it goes, America loves gotties, America loves bodies, uh, pack, pack, pack Pacino, key, Pacino, dude. It's fucking right. Pacino. Pacino. How Listen. the hell did you fuck that line up? Listen, there's a lot of lines. Pacino I counting C <laughs> notes for shooting. <laughs> yeah, stop. Go, 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 go Pacino go. counting C notes for shooting up club lobbies while Eddie Nash controls bankrolls in Wonderland. Tony Soprano has channels and holds down on demand. We want to see it and some motherfuckers go on want be it. Others doing numbers that breed it, bleed it, can't defeat it. Thank you. All of that leads me <laughs> to believe, like, again, like, like we, we want to see these type of lives, and gl- but we don't really want to live it. But we all kind of want to be a gangster, a badass, an OG. Or at least the people I, I hear say these things, I hear people say these things, and I kind of just question if they really are about that life or wait, not. Wait, wait, wait. Does that mean you also question when I say I'm the OG? Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, so, so basically, Poquito. 
<laughs> what what he can say is if you take a look at the obsession and the like take the Gotti situation America was obsessed with John Gotti yep. he was like the superhero fucking mob boss who just kept getting off the Teflon Don is what the media called right. them like they hyped this motherfucker up because America loved that shit and wanted to hear more of it. they didn't want John Gotti a guy who ordered hits you know these gangsters these right. literal criminals they didn't want him to go to jail they were kind of sad when he finally got indicted like, no Aww. but they America wanted this gangster to fight the system and shit and glorify that you're right Chris Pacino Pick one of his movies, you know? There's a lot of stuff that's been glorified. There are some fucking excellent Pacino movies. I love Carlito's Way. Um, I don't remember who Eddie Nash bankrolls in Wonderland, but I'm going to assume it's another mafia gangster shit. And then uh, Tony Soprano is... Uh, why do people love Scarface so much? I'm going to throw it out there. It's a rags to riches story where the fucker dies. Like, it isn't a good rags to riches story where he wins. He just gets gunned down and fucking killed in a blaze of glory. It's like Bonnie and Clyde. But, like, again, why would you want to be that? They die. That's just my thoughts. <laughs> I don't think... I just think there's, like... Michael Corleone is a much better Pacino figure to, like, aspire to be, in my opinion. At least mm. he gets to be old and fucks with the Pope and shit. You know? Like, pick... That's just my two cents. I don't get Scarface. <laughs> I've, I've seen it a few times. I've never thought it was that good. Of it's just, it's the mansion, the car. Doesn't he try to do a terrorist life. to fucking attack in the UN and shit? Isn't he like in a terrorist? Isn't, yeah, didn't they? No, he's a cokehead. But don't they actually perform a terrorist attack in the middle of New York? I don't know. From what I see, he's just a really big so cokehead. So you haven't seen Scarface? I don't remember Scarface. Then you should I, I, stop. Cokehead. They've seen it if they know whether it is. He's more than a cokehead. Ask them. It I is way more movies. than just. I think calling him just a cokehead is a little bit of a whatever. Fair. So whatever. Anyway, how do you feel about this track still? Now that we've gone past the, the little patch of it's, lyric. For me, it's very. It, 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 I like it. I like the creative uh, message behind it. I like how they're trying to bring light to like why why do we like this stuff? Why are we so glorifying this? I actually gave it a five on five. I thought the sound was great. I, I thought the message was great. And I <laughs> thought that the, the way they, they did it was just great. I really liked it. It is a five on five. I'm going to agree with you. In fact, I have to say, as far as subject matter, it's pretty much that, but, like, drilled to fucking death on every angle. Not to complain about it. I do love this song. But, Bonnie, how do you feel? Um, I mean, crimes are a way of life, y'all. Um. <laughs> that is literally her first line. <laughs> you do what you have to, you know, to survive. Like, that's it. And, you know, he's just kind of saying, like, people are going to want to be like those um, and they want to do whatever they can to be at the top. You know, they want to be like this kind of gangster image. Um, and America is full of these people and, you know, they love them because, you know, it's it's just entertainment for them. Um, you know, and he uses them for entertainment and everyone kind of gets what they need from gangsters. You know, you give a little bit, you get a little bit, you know, but then you're in it for life. Um, and judging those that like lie and he's like, I know you're not as hard as you say. He's kind of like criticizing the people who, who aren't. Um, and then he compares like the gangsters that have replaced um, God's warriors, which I thought was kind of interesting. Like, you know, it's not as maybe you're like, because they're not there's doing a like war these religious all things through anymore. Creation. God's warriors are dying and gangsters are their replacements. Yeah. So it's like this, you know, these bad guys are, are taking their place. So it was a cool song. It felt really cool, raw. I enjoyed it a lot. I gave it a 4.5 on 5. Yeah, no. Um, and it's something we haven't really talked a lot about because we've been so distracted by how every song is full of awesome talking points is how talented they are. Um, Deacon's kind of got his more preacher-esque vibe to the way he spits it, but they can go fast, they can go slow. Um, there's some singing range going in. Yeah. Natty comes in and like they manage to hit each of these beats in a way where it's really fun to listen to. It's that good upbeat cadence where they say a lot in the song. And it's not monotonous flows. It's just really like it's I, I just feel like we haven't mentioned it enough. We talked about the production a bunch, but like somehow the actual rap talent of these guys has been overlooked and it just needs to be said how good they are. Um even even the uh the no was really good on that one song we heard him on. Yeah. I mean, my one of my favorite parts of this is like Guns Blazing for Freeze Framing, uh King of New York. Uh just that that line is so fucking good. Like it's just uh, like you have to have this certain attitude to be the best. And especially King of New York is a title everyone wants in hip hop and rap, right? And to be the king, you must be this fucking badass gangster willing to kill everyone type person, you know? And then 
Um, but then it like flips in and it has a scare. It got less danger, 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 war, lo load up the tanks uh, in the name of the Lord. Give thanks for the anger. More major paper and gangsta gangster uh, heats nerves, veins, hearing words from pranksters. Anger anchors us. Cinematic screen spew wrangler language, systematic schemes to change the brain up, divide and conquer mob them ride till their lives are contra. Okay. So first he describes uh, what sounds to me like the two minutes of hate in uh, the uh, Big Brother thing, fucking George Orwell's. Yeah, that's it. So in the sense that this media outlet and this gangster kind of gives us villains, gives us reason to be riled up, gives us a little bit uh, reasons to be angry and get passion and kind of put together. And then what this ends up doing is it literally changes our brains and the way we function as a society and creates division. And if you ever were wondering if that happened, look at 2018 social media. Literally, we're living in the results of what they're describing here in the way that we're all so politically divided. Everyone preaches equality, right, online, and everyone fights for some shit, and everyone fights for it. But really, so many people are, are just like divided and not willing to listen to what other folk have to say when often they are literally all want the same thing but don't really understand that. And I feel like it's a lot of this angst machine. Like if you really look into the birth of 24 hour news cycles, it's really interesting how they look for anything they can. Like I'm turning, I'm tuning into CNN, watching Marines mow down crowds with machine guns, 16 week trainings, Attila the Hunt philosophies. And now we think they won't bring peace to these streets with the same techniques. That shit's hypocrisy. This ain't democracy, it's survival of the fittest. The country built behind closed doors with gods as their witness. Now, that's always been interesting to me. If the idea of how America brings peace is to show up with Marines and shoot people, which empirically, that's how America brings peace the, yeah. at this time, especially. I but think. Isn't that how like a lot of people think? Yeah, that but they bring peace. But America's a country that has spent eighty-seven percent of its existence right. at war as an aggressor. Right. So it doesn't I mean, sound very peaceful, now, does it? They're absolutely not <laughs> in like, and the rockets' red glare and shit in their national anthems about fucking war. But like. It, at this time, I think the second Iraq war had just started or is about to start and Afghanistan's underway. And politically speaking, America is willing to go commit the murderous crimes of a gangster. But those fuckers are sorry. I don't want to call them fuckers. I respect the soldiers and I respect the military. And it's not their fault that political leaders use them as pawns. So respect to the military. But those people commit the same crimes essentially that a gangster might. And uh, but then I think what it's trying to say here is if you see how America brings peace to places like that, if they ever feel the hood is too much of a problem, what if they bring peace to the hood with those same soldiers? You know, that's yeah. or martial laws or Flint, yeah. Michigan or, you know, the militarization of police forces across America. Why do police forces have tanks and fucking armor mains in small towns? Because they made it happen because the American and military complex industry and military industrial complex is a fucked up thing to look into. I digress. Uh, it's a five on five, beautiful fucking song really gets you to think really captures the essence. And I can't say that like I'm innocent. I have watched every mafia fucking thing on Netflix, all the documentaries. Most of my documentary watching is about crime and gangsters and nefarious things and Pablo Escobar's. And even if Knowledge. I don't know, but even if I don't like want to emulate these people, why am I so obsessed with this glorification of these nefarious people? Like, well, it could also be out of curiosity of just who they are, what they did, and just... But nah, again. I think we're all obsessed with it. I yeah. think it's deeper than just that. Like, I think we all are obsessed with bad people. Look at the love of Charles Manson. Anyway, I, we can go on for ages on this. You know, I can never know why people do that. Baby is like a year and a half old now when speaking. More than I can say about that man with his child. All right. Does, uh, do Chris, do you know what this one's about? I know what the first verse is about. Okay. But Immortal, techn Immortal Techniques verse, I, I think I may have, again, not have caught the full thing. All right. What's the first verse about? So. All right. Let's. Bonnie, how's the first verse about since Daniel is um, bad? I'll, I'll, just, I'll just tell you like what all my notes. I'll just go through um, whatever I've got here um, about this song. Try to give song. Chris his chance. It's okay. Um, so this is basically um, if you have a mixed baby. Um, the elders would judge you and shun you and the baby. So, um, you know, at first I wasn't really sure whether it was a white family 
um, or a black family that was criticizing for having the baby. And I suppose it could be either way, really. Um, it's racism, basically, and it's for nothing. It doesn't do anybody any good. Um, it just it's just kind of negativity and like hateful and it isn't good to have in like your heart and your soul. Basically, I just, you know, just wasn't nice. Um, it just kind of felt like old people, like old fashioned people never really know why they are the way that they are. Um, like yeah. And like, you know, they, you know, or why they believe in certain things like racism when it's just nonsense to like modern people. But I mean, it's just the way that they were raised and like the system of things, you know, what they were taught. And, you know, it's just, you know, and a lot of people are ignorant and, like, don't, you know, want to learn more about other cultures or other races and, you know, understand that, you know, everybody's struggling and everybody's kind of dealing with their own shit and nobody's perfect. Um, even I am saying that. Um, <laughs> I think that's the example right there. Um, you, you know, so, I, you know, they're just, you know, ignorant and they're just full of hate and that's, you know, unfortunate. Um, I, there was really nice piano at the end. You know, I love my piano. Um, and they kept using like the sort of like Alvin and the Chipmunks kind of voice, which I thought maybe that was like new technology in 20, you know, 2006, but I don't think I so. Was, was. Um, it was interesting and it was clearly pointed. Um, and like, you're going to die with like bad thoughts. Like if you're like one of these kind of like old people that is, you know, stuck in this kind of like old school mentality. So I gave it a 4.25 uh, on five. Yeah. I mean. Since Chris is whatever over there, uh, I want to just comment quickly on my theory called the Google Divide. So uh, <laughs> in uh, 1998, Google comes into existence. Now, there were search engines before, but we'll just go with Google for the sake of argument. Netscape. It popularizes it. It becomes good in the early 2000s. So my entire like high school life from 2000 to 2005, because we're in Quebec, so we only have five years, um, it, was, it was involving a Google. We would use Google to learn. So I consider that then that means anyone who is 38 or 39 years old right now or older finished high school before Google was ever even a thing, before search engines. So everything about their information point and acquisition is a pre-internet era. Their instinct is going to be go to a newspaper, go to the news, go to an encyclopedia, whatever. E Whereas younger folk, and again, this is relative to where you're born. We're going to call this for North America where Google hit at that point. Uh, older people just acquire information differently. Younger people are more open-minded. We're more connected. We've always right. almost had this, this interconnected existence. So even if you look at the language issues in Quebec, young people speak both languages. There's a lot of language issues here. It's fucking eerie. We have some, I don't want to like compare it to shit, but there's some segregation like I fucking think, tactics and shit. I think that we've gotten that over are, a lot of it, but I think that there's still old more to come. old people push laws that are really anti-English in a way that could be viewed as anti-black in another place. If like, We had one legal document a few years back where if you took the words of like French and English and flipped it to black and white, it looked like fucking a slavery document. It was fucked up. 2014, Bill 101. You guys can Google that shit and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so like, you know, but what we see here is the young people, we just – speak both languages because it's practical it makes more sense it's easier old people uh, pride and ignorance and i think that this song is really taking a little bit of an effort to illustrate that using ra racism and using a specific example of a, a child born of a mixed relationship and how so close-minded that older person was that they were willing to like forego right. any attention to the baby like put her in the cold didn't want her to hurt her close to he because her because his granddaughter's different than she's supposed to be diluted her genes it stopped the music it seemed they'd only seen polluted stream that wasn't clean you know like just kind of really going in and i think it um, yeah. His verse is really, really pretty straightforward. It doesn't like need a whole lot more than what's been said. Um, it's just sad to and see. Then like I, I think that Immortal Techniques verse generalizes to a more global argument. And even though nobody's life is ever perfect, you start wondering if all the pain was really worth it. Pondering the purpose of living, the curse was given. Dreaming about freedom and escaping to prison. People who pimp children are really raping religion. The Matrix is fiction placed in a vision. Anyway, and he goes on. Even that, but it's fucking loaded right there. You know, he's kind of pointing out all the corruption, all the dark things that are happening in life. And I guess kind of, again, granularizing these types of old, added, like, I don't want to call like all of those things old attitudes, but granularizing these corrupt things is, uh, is more than that. So I think it's just like 
I think it's really like a setup for the next song too. It's a really interesting thing. Like we never know why people do all these things. Like we never know why this person was racist, why they sex traffickers do their evil things, why people, you know, just do all sorts of shit. But like could by comfort and peace for the righteous survive disease and political crisis. Like these, these people have the power with all their wealth and their money to actually save the world and instead harbor it, especially that one percent, the elitist and shit. Like it's just it's an interesting noggin scratcher, I guess. Um, I give it a four and a half on five. I thought Immortal Technique fit really well. It was really nice to listen to. Uh, I really enjoyed this track. And Chris, what did you give it? I I actually gave it a five on five. I thought it was really great in terms of the of from what I understand the message. Clearly, it's about racism. Clearly, it's about you know neglecting <clears throat> a, a, like a grandfather or somebody neglecting their grandbaby because of the color of their skin and the, and all that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like. Um, after hearing you explain like the generalization that immortal technique was was trying to get at, because that's the one I didn't really fully grasp, it it, it speaks more volumes now and to me in terms of how like people who are you know older than me and thir like thirty and forty don't under really understand the difference in my life compared to theirs. I feel like in terms of how I see things differently and and, and the world kind of plays out around me differently than it does. Uh, from them and that's something that I kind of took away from this as well and, and, I, and I guess it kind of made me want to understand a little bit more why they don't see the same things why where there is that divide well, would you like to know more about why absolutely why don't we talk about the gates is any other single father who raised a baby girl graciously she was at your door after her mother this this blew my fucking mind <laughs> okay this was this is one of those rare times when I hear a song and it blows my, I said that, but like it needed to be said twice. That is conceptually next level because it ties into the last song very clearly. So here we get introduced to another character called, played by Tone Deaf, who I don't know who Tone Deaf is, but I love his fucking talky rappy voice that yes. he has here. It is so good. Yes. It is so proper. So the context of this song is Tone Deaf has died. And he's just kind of reminiscing. Lights out, so peaceful, stressless. Things used to seem so restless. Forgive me, please. See, I need to address this. Just haven't been this breathless since I met this woman who leapt into my life when I was reckless. Mother, my blessed kid, but she was destined to exit early. So now we have this situation where the, the, the mother dies, so he's left in this, you know, whatever, and he's kind of on his own. And he has this kid that's there, and he's... um. You guess with the best gifts, reminiscing, holding her this, you know, all of this stuff. He never remarried because he took care of his daughter and he right. like, you know, was super focused and he was dedicated to her. And he's also dedicated to the public's protection. We find out he's a fireman, so he's a fucking noble dude. Probably got a fair bit of ladies too, I'm just saying. <laughs> and then a little bit happens. Keep in mind, this beat is fucking stellar and it's really like head bop you know like a, a nice kind of way and then deacon comes in and deacon of course plays the role of saint peter because mm -hmm. it's heaven at heaven's gate so tone death's like i walk towards the figure that's extended in its hand i move to enter past the gates then i'm met with its grass and then deacon goes slow down son there's some things to discuss such as family but first let's talk about vanity vanity man you're sadly mistaken either that or your sanity shaking if you'd examine me patiently you'd retract on your statement i haven't sinned flagrantly i've acted as faithfully as any other single father who raised a girl graciously first of all the ways rhyming those words flowing through them the use of language alone is next fucking level holy shit but he's trying to point out that he wasn't vain. He put his daughter first. He did all this other shit, blah, blah, blah. He's really great. He deserves to go to heaven. Right. And then, you know, um, he kind of gets pointed out. A mixed race queen, that was your thoughts about her mama. Up yonder when her soul, your hate growed from ponders on life, being less trife with a white wife. So in the instance of y'all's difference, it was slice, slice. I couldn't take her making the same mistake. Anyway, so he kind of points out that the way he treated this grandkid in the situation and what happened there and how he acted with this hatred and this There's stuff was so fucking bad. Mm -hmm. And he's pointing out, like, I couldn't take her making the mistakes to crush my life. I was noble. I felt justified. And that's often. And I think the point of this is that when you come across bigotry and hatred and you come across that stuff, even though the guy gets sent to hell, that's what happens. Like, St. Peter goes, no. 
you lived wrong, even though you felt you lived right. Like the, the old adage, uh, the highway to hell is paid with good intentions. So we had this old man who was racist towards this baby and like all this other shit. And he ended up acting so incorrectly and harboring such hatred in his heart over this thing that even though he saved countless lives and did all these other good deeds, at the end of the day, his heart it was all about celebrity. It was all about vanity. It was all about him and his intentions. And that was kind of maybe pointing out that when we, and I look – I want to take the example of language use, right? And we'll take the N word. And we have the conversation of how many people get, some people are definitely of the mind that white folk can say it for some reason. I am of the mind that if you are fighting for the right to say the N word as a white person, you need uh, better priorities because you are being selfish and vain in that moment. It's not mm-hmm. about the other people you're making it about you and your right to say the word not taking into account why other people don't want you to say the word and i think that's a great parable or a a comparison to kind of show the intent of where this vanity comes to light and we have this all over our society and it's just kind of identifying that a lot of those older folk or these people with their bigoted attitudes and stuff it really is this vanity inside of them this pride that they're so afraid of loss or whatever they're afraid of that it it creates these situations and it was beautifully illustrated with this awesome poetry companion piece to the last song that really drove the point home and that's a 515 to me especially especially for how cool tone deaf sounds okay i'm done i just had to not let chris talk first on this one (laughs) <laughs> I'm happy you did that. Um, yeah, I mean, it was really cool. Um, uh, I like how it it very much flows from like the last story, um, you know, with the you know the the grandparent maybe like kind of disrespecting like the mixed baby and and like the person who had it. So it definitely like continues in with that kind of story. Um, the way that it's like spoken, it's like almost like spoken poetry over like this cool beat. So it reminded me a lot of Moby. Maybe that's just what I listened to, and it just kind of like reflected that. And it was around the same kind of time like that you know that kind of music was happening um you know he's kind of saying that he's done some like bad things in his life and he's hoping you know he's asking for 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 forgiveness with prayer um and this kid is doing some of like the same things like mixing like you know white and black and it's bad um and you know he's just saying like oh blacks can't be mixed with like latinos or asians um but white people is like really like the the really bad it's like the enemy like don't mix you know with white people um so he doesn't want his kid to like make the same mistakes that he did but you know he's also kind of not that you know nice like he's kind of like reinforcing like stereotypes and like racism Mm. and stuff like that so um it was a cool song i like the kind of like back and forth that was on this um that was like the flow that was going on with that um it was all about like a serious topic i appreciate that kind of you know more than just like ass bags you know (laughs) i like a serious topic now and then if you may have noticed um (laughs) uh, so i give it a 4.5 on five cool song what did you give it, Chris? I gave it a four on five for what I understood from it because I didn't really grasp the, the the overall picture. Do you have more to add on this song? I don't have much more to add. Perfect. Let's talk about Damnation Interlude. <laughs> Chris, I would love to hear your thoughts on this little interlude. The end is near, is what I got from this. (laughs) They're kind of giving us this setup with all the um, explicit negative shit that we've been getting throughout the album. I kind of feel like they've been building up to like the near end of what they kind of see society coming to, (laughs) how um, they see their environment still being like this kind of hell hole, if you want to kind of call it. Um, <clears throat> and and for them, their nation is damned already. It's it's it's, it's over. Like they don't. It, it's hard for them to see the happiness that could be there or that light that could be there. And they just feel like like, like from what we've gotten, like trapped in this dark place and all of this all this stuff that's just there. I, I gave it a four on five. I mean, for an instrumental, in a sense, there is some vocals giving you like repeating damnation. We're gonna make it type thing. But I'm gonna point it out the. Uh, there is damnation, but it just say it twice only. 
Anyway, go on. That there's there's another one like in terms of like the setting sun, um, well, and like not forgetting us. The devil takes many colors and shapes walking through hell times five. Put down the shutters for damnation is near times mm-hmm. two. Won't ya come help me, Lord? Times three, times three again, and then the devil takes uh, many colors and shapes walking through hell. Those exactly. would be the lyrics. Anyway, I landed it at a four on five. And you? Um, yeah, I mean, the lyrics were interesting. Um, it's a nice guitar and mixing. The flow was really good. I really appre- appreciated the drummings. They were really good. Um, it sounded kind of weird, but it sounded kind of like a discussion with God a little bit. Um, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily go back to this song, but it was good, but still weird. I gave it a, a 3.5 on 5. Okay. So I like the idea that the devil takes many colors and shapes walking through hell. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of like pointing out that throughout your life you're going to have these dark things happening and that the devil is going to manifest in, in many different ways. In fact, yep. sin is supposed to be the most beautiful thing. The devil is supposed to be the most gorgeous creature. This idea of the devil as this red horn-shaped thing, that's just media fabrication. Like, the tempt- devil is supposed to be – like, bad is sexy, like, is the kind of point, you know? Which is, is basically the cover, right? Like, she's there – like yeah. being like, oh, come to me, I'm so sexy. But then you see these skulls of people that she's devoured. Yeah, and in a sense, so the devil kind of is going to be that thing that's drawing you. or And then pull down the shutters for damnation is near. So I think that's just kind of like saying the end of the world is coming. And, and you know, it, it's like commenting a little bit on how people's attitudes might be like, oh, shit, in closing the shutters instead of doing anything to like fix the situation. Right. Mm-hmm. And then help me, God, help me, because, you know, at the end when it's too late after whatever, mm-hmm. you're going to feel this way. And then it just kind of at the end reiterates the devil kind of comes through and, and is going to be disguised in a sense. And it's beautifully orchestrated. I think it's the interlude serves the role of bringing us again to an exoidal place. It takes us like... The last few songs have kind of shown us, you know, how, uh, you know, you get high or whatever and you have your things happen in life, your distractions, and they mess up, you know, you have a bit of media perception kind of like showing the obsession of gangsterism and how that can hit your brain. And then you have your little two-parter of like kind of how you grow with that ignorance and you grow with that vanity that it creates and that pride. So that little part with uh, Never Know Why in the Gates brings it forward saying as you become an adult with these things and you harbor these hatreds and prejudice, you end up at this point where as you're old and the end of the world is coming, let's say you are not prepared for it. And I think it's really cool for the story that they're trying to put out, the danger of like indulging in all this stuff. It really fits so well into this thing. I gave it a four and a half on five. It was really amazing to me. But let's talk about Hellfire. Let's. And it's not on the roof, it's in the booth. Then trails from the stage that are you for all you for more. It starts off with Arthur Brown's classic fucking experience. I am the god of hellfire. And and then fire. Da, 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 that was da, amazing da. to hear for yeah, the first time. Yeah, it was by very the way. cool. I, I think it was Todd in the Shadows did something talking about him for his one hit wonder series. It's mm-hmm. fucking enlightening. It's an amazing song, uh, the hellfire track or whatever, the, the other one. And then, yeah, and then it kind of becomes the most hip-hop version of what that hellfire thing and would like be like straight flexing yeah like it slows it down as the drums doing dunch and it just does it all right anyway how do you feel bonnie um this was amazing um it sounded like a kind of like 60s 70s kind of a song um it sounded so ran- random but i loved it like right away um you know there's evil lurking in everybody and it causes bad things to happen and he talks about the problems um that all this bas- badness is causing um, you know, and he talks about kind of lo- like global warming a little bit and like climate change. And he talks about, you know, lots of melting in Antarctica and, um, you know, which I appreciate that he's drawing, you know, reference to. And I think that this was around the same time as um, Al Gore's uh, movie. Um, Inconvenient Truth. Inconvenient Truth. There we go. Um, so, yeah, I think it was around the same time as like we're acknowledging that climate change is actually happening. Um there's fire in the forest. There's molten river from the well, volcanoes and the fire pits of in the hell. Forest. Fire like a like lit cigarette in dry leaves. Yeah, which is like fucking irresponsible, guys. Come on. Did that? Did what's Sorry, his face? Bonnie. Did Smokey, Smokey the, bear the Bear not teach you anything? Don't don't do that. Sorry, Bonnie. Um, oh, don't be sorry to me. Be sorry to all the damn trees that you're killing. I don't mean to like, point a finger at you. You didn't do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here saying. So. <laughs> but anyways, I love this song. I gave it a five on five. It was great.
And you, Christopher? I just thought that, I honestly, I thought they were making an entire, like, reference to, like, just being super fuego. Like, we're just really good rappers. That, that could be it, too. That, that could be it, too. not what it is. Okay. It could be it. It's an uh, interesting that's, point that's of view. That's how I took it. I mean, I gave it a four. <laughs> Why did you five. take it like that? Um, Question we've line. all been asking. There's a line. One line. Well, no, it's a line. I was like, fire, not obtained by propane or lighter. Uh, no man gonna contain the flames they burn higher yell fire and it's not on the roof and it's in the booth that spreads from the stage to the youth I just just felt like they were being like yo we're being creative we're being cunning but you know where we spent so much time making fire rhymes yeah and then we spent so much time giving you in depth message we just kind of want to flex a little bit with still keeping a message but but, yeah but then that's like the first part like the first little part and then see a hater closing his nose when we close him indoors you gotta bounce because I learned where there's smoke there's fire similar to the streets oh, where yeah. there's spokes there's tires keep rolling like eggs poppers see the plane that's a good line people mm-hmm. call it molly now <laughs> well i guess they're <laughs> different i know that ecstasy and molly are different and poppers are a whole other thing and they uh they go on the dental records to retrieve the names of course the sheer force will scorch on the contact zip of flow here we go let's all cock back and fire it sounds like they're murking mcs no it sounds like <laughs> they murk mcs and they have hot things and they spit the truth but then they encounter a certain opposition and there's a certain like reality and mm-hmm. stuff i feel like they're saying more but you stop listening at a certain point because there was the other half of the verse where it was a little more conscious i would say and, and not to say that you're wrong you're just saying that it was they were saying more than just it's fuego you know like there's there's more to it Fire, like melt America, Antarctica down, evict polar bears helping the sound spit. That's definitely not about Fuego. It's not about, but all I, about them. I, 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 and, and now fact, breaking it down, I, I understand it. But I'm saying like that could just be a metaphor. Be? But that could just be a metaphor of like uh, my, fi- my bars are fire. My bars are so fire <laughs> that they are destroying the environment. Yes. Yep. I would not I would not see any rapper not saying that. Like I, I see people saying that you, just to You are saying that the really conscious guys that have been super lyrical and kinda on point in a They smart, would want to flex as well. I don't see why they can't just flex and have a good this, time. This whole album has been how they flex, you know? I, I mean No, I don't actually get your point at all. That's like wait, impl- No no, I get his point. I mean no, 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 but why these guys would be wanting to flex. I don't get that point at all. No, what I mean, I'm not saying... No, no, no you fl- said these guys would want but to be... But flexing with, like, like, they're just, like, we're better rappers. Like, keeping their wordplay, keeping their yeah. metaphors, keeping how they how they spit, and bringing in some deep message to it. Yeah, but, I like, when I, when I listened to it and when I read it, I felt like they were just kind of kicking back and being them, being cunning... But they're just flexing like how their bars are fire and how they 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 they're good rappers. Again, like twenty five percent at tops might have approached the fact that they have skill, right? But I think it was trying to import fat passion or whatever. It wasn't even really hmm. about rap skill. So much is there's okay. this essence that's bigger than them, right? Okay. So I still don't get why they would drop this vain ego track out of nowhere because that's literally the opposite of the message they put two songs ago. I didn't notice it as veiny or I don't, it is maybe pre- not. just to put it out there. Anytime you're going, my rhymes are better than his rhymes. You're being a vain egotist. It just doesn't seem to be in line with their moral character to want to write that song okay. is I guess my, my point of view on that. So I wonder how you got to the conclusion that they would want to write that. song. I might be wrong. Like I might be, I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think that's what the song is really saying. I think that, they're saying that there is pure passion and then there's all sorts of other bad shit going on. And they, I think they use fire loosely to describe like they, they use fire to like, they contextualize it here. Right. Um, see a hater. Uh, so where there's smoke, there's fire. Right. So I think that line is like the key to this song. Mm-hmm. So they're using the first part to describe, you're right. Their shit is fire. They're onto something. They've, there's smoke here. There's fire. Like, there's shit. But then they use it to also just talk about a lot of different little things as they go in their kind of one line way. So I, I just don't think it's fair to define a whole song based off of what a part of a but song maybe, is about. But well, maybe, hold on, just to like bring it back to that, I think that maybe it could be still be like that because, you know, he's talking about like, you know, dropping a cigarette in dry fire and how quickly the music spreads. 
Goodbye, uh-huh. leave or die. Whenever your eyes see fire that burns like a wound signs. with a pool of liquor <laughs> running through it like a molten river. Imagine hell like it's a motion picture. Hopeless folks roasting like it's a joke, but sicker. Try living with fire is in their circumstances. They're fucking whatever because mm-hmm. they're smoke. Not like water and mixed drinks. Forget rank. That's like the opposite of like you know I don't know what a lot of mixed strength things forget rank when enemies challenging this tank fire murder death kill with the grill you've heard the best don't sit still as you feel this fire folks catch chills off the skill the vil ill will liquidly shields with fire too late to secure the perimeter it'll enter your soul can't control the limits fire so I think what they're talking about is not their skill but their message and their passion and their purity I think they literally talk about their skill. Uh, and they, like the part ha- that you just read. No, no, I'm that last sure. little part, fire <laughs> folks catch skills off, chills off the skill. It's they get, the vil, the People get so will. excited because of their skills. That's literally what they say. I think it ends up, I think, but <laughs> like, again, I don't think that the whole song can be defined as just saying that they're fire and they're the best. That's I'm, to me like a shallow, limited way of looking at it. They may have a couple of lines implying that what they're doing, but I think it's tied into a bigger theme, a bigger picture. Okay. So I just don't think that them going, fire that burns like a wound with a pool of liquor is, is really about them so much as their message and what they're saying and the passion and the power that they're coming at you with you know and then they're saying the skill lines to kind of add that extra emphasis but not only is it this pure and dope we're also that good you know so that you want to listen to it but i definitely don't think it's a comparison against other people i think it's a matter of more of a personal like you conversation like this is just kind of what it is you know i don't know if that makes sense you might like i might be wrong i just don't think the song is about them being the best I think they just played up on fire and went in a lot of different directions with it. You're that's right. true. I give it a four, and I yeah, that's where I'm at with it. I thought I feel like it's a bit of a fun novelty song, but like it's a little bit less fun than like I can see what's fun, but like I don't feel it as much. You know, like I feel like after like eight listens, I'd be a little bit annoyed of it compared to some of the other ones where they feel more timeless and awesome, mostly because they picked a pretty dated song to start with. Um, Hmm. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on that. Uh, let's move on to Remember Me Abstract Reality. <music> this one's a bit of an instrumentally composed one, another little interlude thing. I mean, the abstract has become the reality is an amazing line. Uh, the abstract is like, you know, the not so defined, the unclear, the not so tangible is now the reality. All they've done is define this unclear essence and turn it into something reality and tangible. Abstract's also a summary of a research paper that could be used to describe a bigger thing in whole. So it's mm-hmm. a really beautiful. So the abstract, the summary has become the reality. It's a great line to me. And then to the setting sun, to the setting sun, to the setting sun, to the setting sun. Remember me, remember me. Easy to forget, easy to forget. To the setting sun, remember me, oh Lord. And here I feel like it's just that desire to want to like live on and, and not be like passed over and not be forgotten and a little bit of a... Music's like, a pretty good way to like have yeah. that, you know, because it's going to be like live on forever as long as somebody, somebody's listening to it. But I love the beat, the melody, just the the way it comes in and they flip through it and it changes a whole bunch of times. And it's, it's like four and a half minutes and I wasn't expecting it. Like I figured that like when I saw the track length, like the next one's only like two minutes. I thought that would be like the instrumental, right. but no, I never got bored. I'm going to give this a four and a half on five. It's a really fucking great piece of music to listen to and it's a really nice break after the lyrical density like they're really good with their use of breaking things up a little bit to let things digest that's fair so yeah what'd you uh, feel i give it a 4.3 i i really liked the the i got this feeling of like not wanting to be immortalized in a sense like remembered not forgotten um you still got that kind of religious feel where they're like don't forget me lord like help me there um but all in all, it's a really great piece put together instrumentally, and that's that's what I really like from it. And I do agree with Holden. I mean, it's it's a nice break from everything we have gotten so far. But they, I also do want to just say they've done a good job in terms of putting in the different in, uh, interludes and kind of giving us, like, here's the amount of songs, here's a break. Here's the amount of songs, here's a break. Like, I, f- I feel like in the structure of the album itself, they have done well with this. Yeah. So I left it with a 4.3. <clears throat> cool. 
Um, I thought this was kind of like a weird mix of like instruments and sounds, but I, I was I liked it. I found it was very creative, um, and you know. Basically, the abstract becomes the reality, um, and you know it is mostly an instrumental um, on this song. There's not too many lyrics, you know, as you mentioned. Um, it, it was long, um, and it was kind of weird, but I still appreciated it. Um, I'm giving it a three point five because I wouldn't go back to it, but it works with the album. What? Yeah. I could just play this on a fucking loop for like an hour straight. So mm-hmm. fucking good. You're gonna hear more of this song. I'm just putting it out there. Great. Um, <laughs> let's talk about how. What will you do when I play it? I hearse these verses, flipping words, shit for an empty purse feels worthless. Listen, word of mouth. This one is so interesting because he's kind of, it goes, like, I feel like the album's over now, right? Like, a little bit. And we're taking a break to, like, this is, like, their Patreon ad. That's, that's honestly what I feel about this. Just to, like, contextualize it. Because hmm. this track is kind of pointing out, I'm 25 now. Yeah, I told my pops I tossed the towel in. Making music no longer easily makes my smile bend. Though wows from the crowd ain't in. Them smiles and back pats still ain't helping with rent checks, et cetera, et cetera. He just basically goes through and describes how fucking broke he is and how at the end of the day, um, for the love is a hard reason to keep my life in suspension. And I kind of get where the fuck he's coming from. I mean, I never quit my job to pursue my dreams, so I suppose I've never had to starve like that. But because I never did, I also never got to have the success that came with it. And now I have to try this slower version of the grind. But for the love of it, you put in hours and hours. I mean, even running this, every episode you see here probably takes eight hours of my life. (laughs) Like, just just like every episode, every one of them. And for the love... I love it, so I'm going to keep doing it. But it's a hard reason to, like, justify to anyone else that it's worth doing. And after time, after years, after six, seven years, you know, a career of doing something, if it doesn't pay your bills, you know, if it doesn't. So in a sense, I think they're just trying to justify how they love doing this, but it's not enough to literally sustain them as people. So if you like what we're doing, feel free to hit up patreon.com slash behind that suit. <laughs> like, like, I mean, it sounds like whatever, but I genuinely feel like that's what they did with and it, Fucking right. fair enough, man. I really get it. I think it's one of the more honest tracks on this album in like a personal sense. And I've also not heard many people so honestly just express it. Like tours are expensive, hotel bills, this bills, that we don't make fucking money. We need your help. Buy our damn project. You know, like <laughs> show us that like you want us. And I mean, they're still making music. I think they dropped an album like last year. So they're still around, but I still think it doing also, it. It, it kind of reminds me of like the conversations that we have in terms of like when we talk about the rap generation gap and like why some of the newer artists are getting uh, up there and all the, all the artists that we claim as like legends or whatever are not still popping. It's like <clears throat> they're kind of like if you want music from us, you need to support us. Yeah. And without the support, we can't be we can't keep giving you what we can give you right now. Yeah. Right. But and I, also- I feel like. But it's also kind of responding to the idea, well, you should be doing it for the love of it. And they're saying, no, like, for the love doesn't pay my damn bills. But that's, yeah. but that, like, so, but who's supposed to do it for the love of it? Like, the Them. artists? Them, yeah. yeah, the artists. And people expect us probably to make these podcasts for the love of it. You're on YouTube, you're doing it because you love doing it. And when I talk to people about the life that I live, they're like, well, you love doing it. That doesn't mean that I would not like to get fucking paid significantly better than right. I do for this effort. <laughs> oh, not not to imply anything to you audience people, but just in life. You put in all this time and effort. And I love yeah. what I do because I would not do it otherwise. Right. But, yo, if in, like, five years there's no money ever made off of it, for the love becomes a very hard thing to motivate yeah. yourself on. It becomes challenging. And when I would love to do nothing more than, like, quit my job, wake up in the morning, review an album, you know, research some shit, have staffers to help me. You know, imagine the product we could create. But instead, we we love it, you know, and it's just not the same thing. Anyway, yep. this sounds like, a five. I on. like how you broke that. <laughs> that was that was a nice effect. We lo- like it was so hard for you to even I mean, say it because you acknowledge the what only it is. weekends I've had off in the last since November 2016 is when I fell off my fucking bike and I couldn't move as a person. So like I, I literally couldn't do anything. That's the only weekend I've had off in that long since we started this so like i get it where they're coming from i'm just trying to picture years down mm-hmm. i 
whatever, I have a job, I'm fine. But they guy, I can see where they're coming from. This song is a five on five to me. And I'm not saying anyone has this obligation to like pay these people, but I agree with you. They are saying like, if you do want us to make more, feel free to hit us up at, and, you know, like fucking buy our shit. Yeah. But, like it, it's, it's, it's not a bad song. No, it's amazing. I, I five. just minded it at a four. Five. Um, yeah, I mean, it starts off sounding like very sad, uh, so but, you know, has, has kind of like, he's kind of stopped fucking around, he's starting to behave, um, he's dedicating his time to his music, um, and, you know, he's making better choices, doing better things, um, he makes music for himself, but he, he does need to make some money, I mean, basically what you said, um, you know, wonders what will happen if he's not making money anymore, and he's kind of hoping that he's making like the right decision here um, because he's doing what, you know, what he loves. And he's kind of saying, well, what would you do? Like, you know, would you keep going if it wasn't making money or, you know, just because people are asking you to, or, you know, because you love it or, or do you, you know, have a house? Do you pay for things? Do you have, you know, the things that you need? Um, so it's pretty realistic. Um, I give it a four on five. All right. Um, there's one more. The light feeding club dub. It's the light. Have you seen the light? Chris, what did you take from the light? To find the light, you need to accept, from what I got is you need to accept whatever mistakes you've made, whatever sins you've committed, whatever uh, negative energy you've released into the world, and that'll help you be better. That'll help you find a clearer path, have a clearer head, and feel like <clears throat> you're just doing good. Yeah. Okay. And that's all? That's mostly what I took from it. It's a it's a nice long five minute track, but it it it's it's constructed in a way that kinda makes you think. And that's what I like about a lot of the songs on this album is that with the music and the D and the little bit of the DJ cuts and having and having the instrumentals and uh, kind of be dispersed out, it it makes you think about what they're saying and, and makes you really reflect back and that's what I really enjoyed about this. I gave this a four point five. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, this is like you know, be very honest with yourself and ignore others and you know, just like make your communities better. Um, you know, if there's a place that's struggling, like see what you can do to help out. Um, I like like the mix of like the raw instruments with like the modern technology on this one. I thought that was really cool. Um, you can give up like the sins of your past and embrace the positive. So it's, it is possible. Um, you know, you have to embrace like the darkness and understand like all this badness that you've done and, you know, the dark things that you've done, you know, which you, you know, which when we think back to, you know, when all the things that you're doing, you know, prostitution, drugs, sex, blah, 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 blah um, at night to like his previous songs that mentioned that. So everything is kind of flowing and everything works with this. Um, and, um, you know, it's possible to like, you know, come back and do better in your life. And that's great. Um, it sounds kind of like a live jazz show that's been like mixed. So I thought that was really fun and interesting. A positive final message. Um, so I give it a four on, four on five. Yeah. Um, I think the whole point, the evil, the good, the legal, illegal, what's hood. We see through people, but we don't look in ourselves like we should. We try to grow in the cold, so busy shoveling snow that we tend to forget the light that's warming our soul. If you want to be healed, then you got to reveal the truth. So it's kind of like, that's like the album in a nutshell. So here's all the marketing and the messaging that kind of um, dictate how you're supposed to live your life and what's supposed to happen and everything. And we kind of we can spot the evils and the shit in other people and we look through other people and we're so focused on what are others up to that we never really look into ourselves. And if you, I've been on a mission of like improving myself because I, I'm inherently a selfish asshole. <laughs> and uh, it's true to be able to improve. You must be able to admit that inherently you are these things. You are, maybe you're misogynistic. Maybe you are kind of racist. Maybe you are fucking, uh, you desire to do the worst things out there. But if you can't be like honest with yourself about who you are, it's impossible to have self-awareness, you know? And then the verse has this really cool kind of sort of choppy flow. Like, is it clearer in the mirror when you look into it, your exterior? I can't do it, but like it's choppy. It's like following this like cadence is trickier than some of the other ones. And then I like how it emphasizes like, it's not like, let's say, saying sex is bad, 
but that sticking your dick in the holes aimlessly can have unintended consequences like pregnancy. And like, I think they're just trying to say like, they're not trying to be preachy so much as to be careful. So if there was a preachiness to their album, it's definitely not do this or that. It, it's uh, and even on the song, it's just be honest with yourself, know what you're doing and make sure that you act in a way that's going to benefit you, you know? Um, the musical interlude that just it sounded this like infusion of uplifting like jazzy kind of like you almost felt like you were going on this journey of recovery over mm -hmm. the course of this song it was the perfect way to end this project like you start off and you go through all these darker tones this heavier subject matter and then at the end it's like okay so we've explained to you empirically about temptation darkness and the bad habits that you do here's the solution here's the solace here's your salvation mm -hmm. and it's so well done it's such a perfect way to end this album I get this bad boy a 4.75 on 5. I was, it's a little bit stylistically, like I have to be in the mood for it, but it's fucking perfect. Honestly, it's it should <laughs> be a 5. I'm being a bit of a shit by not giving it a 5, but whatever. Gotta be true to yourself, as the song said, so 4.75. Yeah. But like, it's really cool to me. It's, it's just, it's just the completion of this project. It really is the end to this fucking story. This album, anyway, we can wrap up on the album. So I gave the project a 4.65 on 5. Wow. It is good. really incredible to me. But I, it, it kind of hits up on what I, so I've been, part of the whole point of this is to understand, like this project, this YouTube channel, for me at least, is to understand what makes an album amazing. And it kind of fits it. All the songs are diverse enough to be like interesting. From a thematic point of view, yeah. every track approaches something new while doing kind of like what Dam did in carrying forward, like Kendrick Lamar's Dam, by carrying forward a narrative. Like if Kendrick's album deserved as a fucking Pulitzer for that, I think this is a better written album. Wow. I think this album <laughs> is just stronger. I mean, maybe it isn't a better produced album or maybe the beats or whatever your fucking preferences are, but I'm talking about just the writing, the language, the... Plus, there's three people instead of one. You can make your arguments. I don't care. But, like, I just think it's it's so well done. It, it tells this story of, like, why the world – it just answers the question, what is the problem, where the problem is, how the problem happens, how to resolve the, the problem. Yep. And it just covers it all. And it, it just layers it all in a way that really illustrates the point. They have their little Patreon plug at their video, and they did the song before. I think it's so well done. It is one of my favorite albums I've discovered since we started doing this. It's so cool. That's how I feel about that. It's amazing. I give it a 4.25. I think it was. it doesn't feel like a long album doesn't get draggy it doesn't get boring it doesn't get uh there, there's a, what i gave one three i think on the entire like i think i think even that was a 3.9 on one of the songs so <clears throat> there isn't really any major dip in this album it's very consistent in terms of uh depth message it's very consistent in terms of the instruments and and i feel like there are a lot of the album a lot of the instrumentals are live instruments like I know there is some DJ cuts. I know there's like some some of that, but I feel like there's a lot more live instruments there, which makes the sound different, more authentic a little bit. So that's how I feel for the album. That's cool. Um, overall, I gave it a four point one eight on uh, five sets, so like at eighty three percent. And honestly, like the more I listen to it, and you know, just listening to it again, like you know, before we we started this review here today, um, like. It, you know, some of the songs I was like, really? I gave it that mark? Like, I feel like like the overall grade should be higher. Um, but, I mean, I kept my grades as my, like, you know, initial reaction, basically. But I do think that they should be better. Um, I mean, there's a really great use of instruments on this album. It's great experimenting with sound and, like, styles. It's very spiritual and religious. And it kind of teaches you something. It You know, it leaves something more in your soul you know, when you walk away from it. And I think that's great. Um, you know, and they, he covers or they cover like a lot of, you know, like the hot topics like, you know, crime, racism, judging government, uh, climate change, like a lot of like interesting, really cool, um, you know, topics that aren't necessarily talked about in other rap that we've listened to so far as of yet. Um, so yeah, I really appreciated it. It was really cool. Um, if you haven't, you know, listened to it, go listen to it. It's definitely worth like, you know, you can listen to like the whole album, you know, while taking a drive or going for a walk or whatever. Like it's very smooth and it's very summery. It's very appropriate for now. So go listen to it if you haven't already. 
All right, cool. So thank you all for watching. We really appreciate you being with us. It's really awesome, especially if you watched the whole thing. You guys are the real MVPs. Yep. And those of you who just came and skipped ahead, you're the second level MVP. That's <laughs> a little, you're still as good, but the ones who watched the whole thing are just a little bit cooler. Yeah, it's mid. Um, we, do, we totally want to hear your feedback. Uh, we started off by reading our favorite comment of last week. I read and answer every single comment on this channel. Uh, your feedback is invaluable to helping us grow and get better at this. Google exists. Keywords are hard to find. You guys give us, you tell us what to Google, essentially. Um, you help us get better. And um, who, we just got to give some love to Mozart, Mozart, Lindell Williams, and Super Old School 1994 because, you know, uh, the patrons, it really is helps. It, even if it's just psychological because the numbers aren't there, it just, it renews your spirit. And if you do join us, you get the request raffle where you guys get to pick an album that you want to see us cover. And if your album gets picked, we do it no matter what. No questions asked. So if it's <laughs> your album or your boy's album, it's a great way to get us to cover it. Um, we also get access to content early. And we're thinking about making some behind-the-scenes shit and just some extra shit to throw there and, and enhance the Patreon. Um, otherwise, if you like what we do, subscribe if you feel like it. Uh, you get a lot of videos. You can stick for the ones you want. Um, feel free to like this video if you thought it was cool. Yep. And if you do leave the comment, my favorite one, the one I don't, you know, I really want to see. Uh, it would be so amazing. And, uh, yeah, don't hit that bell. We might annoy you with our releases. On that note, <laughs> have a great day. Peace. Bye. Peace.